What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the Fast Life Podcast. On today's episode, we have Paige from Stripe Cult Painting out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Now, I did this podcast back whenever I drove up to the Pacific Northwest and, of course, Salt Lake being one of the stops. Now, I've been following Paige for quite some time now, and watching her grow as an artist over these years has been a true pleasure. In this episode, we dive into her history with art and how it kind of evolved and got her to this point now being a custom painter. Now, she's a new mother and working in the shop with her husband and also their newborn baby. Like it was a crazy dynamic that I got to witness and experience firsthand while up in Salt Lake with them. I can't wait for you guys to check out this episode, but please, before you do so, check out our sponsors, Simpson Motorcycle Helmets, Thunder Max USA, Arlen Ness Motorcycles, Cowboy Harley Davidson, Lexan Moto, Lucky Dave's, and now, Custom Dynamics. Yes, we added Custom Dynamics to the sponsorship. Great to have them on board, and I hope you guys are checking out our Patreon. We have a lot of great opportunities for you to win a Simpson helmet, which we are giving away one Simpson helmet every month in 2023. And so all you gotta do is join our Patreon. There's links in the description. And don't forget, you can check out every one of our sponsors in the description. Check them out, support the podcast, and let's get into this episode with Paige of Stripe Cult Painting. All right. First one on the trip. Thank you. Yeah. Paige, right? <laughs> yes. All right. I, I found out your name last night at the bar. Oh, Cause really? Because I, I know you had Stripe Cult Painting. I don't know you yeah. as Paige. You know what I'm saying? Who said? Uh, I think I was someone, someone's asking me, so what's your podcast? I'm doing one with uh, Stripe Cult Painting. But I don't know. What's her name? He goes, I think it's Paige. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Okay, maybe I don't. Yeah. I don't know exactly which guy it was. There was a slew of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I was... Uh, I was trying to reach out. There's a couple of people I really wanted to talk to out here. And then with us doing these video things, I wanted, obviously, paint is visual. Yeah. And I knew you would have a shop of some sort, so there'd be a little bit more context Yeah. to make it a visual uh, good time, I yeah. guess you'd say. Visually good time, <laughs> <Yeah>. appealing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then I also saw that you, you, know, you recently had a baby, and I didn't know how fresh the baby was. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty fresh, but. Yeah. But you said it was five months. So yeah, it was five like, months isn't too much. Yeah, it's like. It's it's working pretty good by this point. <laughs> yeah, her head is stable finally. <laughs> well, uh, you know, like I said, I wanted to just kind of do this and and really get to understand, you know, which I think we've talked a little bit for the last hour or so, but you know, you, where did art art like find a home in your life? Was it through the tattooing, or was it stuff before that, or like where did it all come from? You know what I mean? Um, so my mom is a really good artist. She's yeah. been painting. For as long as I've known, um, keep going. <laughs> okay, uh, she she has her doctorate in pretty much art. So yeah, for my whole life, she's always put a pencil or a paintbrush in my hand, um, and I've always started. I started drawing horses, and then it was faces, and then it was graffiti, uh -huh. and then yeah, I tried to. I didn't know like if I could make money doing art, you know. Yeah, so I just. Yeah planned on not but you know and this was like when you were a kid and stuff like that yeah so like she's just she's always just given me art supplies so what I've did always she been doing it. go to you said she went to school for it uh or? she i mean she teaches college oh. and she teaches she actually she helps people learn now and mm. it kind of sounds weird but she figures out what side of your brain that you use the most and help you use the other side mm. but she yeah she's always taught she started the art institute and all these different places. That's right. Graphic design. And she's super talented. Her paintings are like, she can paint something in 30 minutes and it looks realistic. Wow. It's like a, a lot to like try and live up to that. So I'm like, <laughs> here's my paint job. And she's like, cool. Pats me on the back. Like, it goes yeah. back to her thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's well, that's right. That's a, uh, I mean, growing up in a, in a household like that, it must be um, an experience because you're, you're, you're kind of surrounded by creativity in a sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and we're very different. Like, our art is very different. Like, especially when I was, like, painting faces, I'm, like, super goth, you know? I'm, like, the eyes are bleeding or heads <laughs> ripped off. And she's, like, cool. But, yeah. I mean, it it's really useful to have her around. Because if I ever yeah. needed an art supply, she's, like, oh, I have all this. Come by and I'll teach you stuff, you know? So, if I ever do want to get back into painting faces or whatever it is, yeah. she's right there to help me get back. Did you ever like dabble in any of that stuff like oil painting and, mm -hmm. and art, you know, acrylics and stuff like that with her in yeah. that world? So Yeah, like I, yeah, I started with drawing and then watercolor and then I got into acrylics. And then after a while I started doing oil on top of my acrylics. Mm. 
that's how Seth actually got me to date him. Is <laughs> he would make me frames from oh, for all my paintings. That's dope. Yeah. Oh, that's rad. That's well, a like a heavy thing. I couldn't even pick it up for this little painting. You know? <laughs> well, th- man, that that would be a great place to grow up. I mean, I I, I think I had a similar upbringing where, uh, you know, my mom really supported me with drawing because I, I I got comics and I would read them and then, well, okay, what do I do with it? I'm like, well, I'm gonna try to draw what I see. Yeah, and that's how I kind of got into somewhat of like the muscle memory of of just you know sketching and things like that and. And funny enough, I was telling you, I played basketball growing up Mm -hmm. in the late nineties, the shoe craze kind of happened. Yeah. You know, Jordans and Air Maxes and all that crazy shit. So we used to go like custom paint our shoes back then, but not like airbrushing. Yeah. Yeah. Like now there's a whole world of that where people make like a killing doing that stuff. But we were like spray paint, like taping it off this (laughs) and, and we'd take these shoes and like do shit like that. And I just found it like, I like that idea of like an idea. Mm -hmm coming to life even though yeah. it wasn't great i mean go, but it's yours and yeah. you're proud of it i feel like it's like that kind of stuff is really important because i for the most part artists don't make money like yeah. you have to be really lucky and do all the right things and fight the right thing yeah with art to make money so having someone to encourage you to do it and not mm-hmm. be like you need to grow up go to college yeah, and do all yeah. this stuff so yeah it's funny how some art forms are kind of like more Cause I feel like in, in my house and just the other people I've known, like they, when it came to drawing and those kind of things, people were more in, at least in my family in circles, they were more like pushing, but certain other types of art forms like music and stuff. It's like, Oh, I'm glad you're learning, but you know, oh, you probably not going to make it, <laughs> yeah. you know, like that yeah. did happen in those kind of spaces with like my brother's really good, uh, musician, guitarist and stuff. But yeah, and, I mean, uh, it's hard to make hard. money in that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's like it's saturated. Yeah having someone encouraging you to keep on going with whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's a lucky thing, you know? Yeah. So as you're going through like high school, like you're still drawing, kind of doing things. You said you went to school for, for photography though. Like, mm-hmm. was that just kind of like looking into the space of creativity and art and trying to find something that looked like it could be a career or did you actually have like a want a to want? do it? Yeah. No, <laughs> no. Like I've always just wanted to draw. Yeah. Um, my mom at the time worked at the art Institute So I first went there, it was like graphic design, and then I did fashion merchandising, Mm. and then I did photography, and then I eventually just got kicked out because I wasn't going. (laughs) You're Van Wilder, you're just going Yeah, I was like, well, and the problem with the Art Institute, not that I'm talking shit, is um, they had teachers there that are really good at what they did in their career, Uh but they they don't know how to teach. So all the classes are four hours long, and they're all PowerPoints. Mm. And so three classes, two classes a day, that's... So that's I couldn't grip. keep up, you yeah. know, so um, I dropped out of that. And then I had, yeah, I had like three tattoo apprenticeships that didn't work out. I wasn't like in the best headspace when I, I was kind of young and yeah, partying and doing my thing, you know, <laughs> not being super smart. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just. Well, it's cool that you actually went the route of apprenticeships because I think at the time, and I think a lot of people think of that now, like apprenticeships as a. Man, that's a lot of time to go do and hang out in this like these shops that have like they don't seem credible. Clean like, their toilets. <laughs> yeah, and you're doing like all this grunt work, but then it, it does kind of it teaches you a lot in just I feel like a, a semi short amount of time. You know, yeah. usually apprenticeships about a year, mm-hmm. year and a half, something like that, two years maybe. So but you still found your way into tattooing though with that, right? <laughs> Eventually, like none of my apprenticeships worked out either. Like I wasn't in the right headspace or like they were a little creepy or it wasn't like a good, good match. Yeah. But the yeah. last guy that taught me is actually a good friend. Um, but Seth's known him for a while. He came up to me asking me to teach him about paint. Mm-hmm. And I was like, if you teach me how to tattoo. Yeah. And so I almost got like fast tracked with tattooing. He's mm-hmm. like, just draw something, tattoo your husband. Let's just, cause he didn't want to teach anybody anymore. That's exactly what happened to me. Yeah. So I had a guy that wanted to learn airbrush mm-hmm. and he was a tattooist and he, and this was like 2007 kind of when, um, like the tattoo culture exploded in like Oh five. And yeah. you know what I mean? After I the TV shows and things like that. And it seemed like the level of like artistry that came into tattooing afterwards, like mm-hmm. went from 
you know, your Spalding catalog, like flash art to like then, oh, two, three, four, five, and then boom, it's like real artists come into the play. Yeah. And they're like adding crazy, real crazy shit. Yeah. Yeah. And so he was kind of on that spectrum. And, and so I kind of was learning a lot more faces and, you know, just shadowing and less lining and kind of creating, you know, mm-hmm. almost that Chicano lowrider style, prison style kind of tattooing. Like gray work. Gray and, work yeah. and nice faded gray. I don't know the terms anymore, but. I love um, that kind of stuff. Though. Yeah, I like it, it too. Sweet. And it's hard to do. It's super hard to do. I almost quit a few times because I was like, I learned from that guy. We got a shot. We got three shops and mm. none of them worked out. And I've only been tattooing a little over two years. So like mm. every, my baby is freaking out right now. <laughs> um, every time I'd get set up, we'd have to move again. Oh. And then I couldn't tattoo for like two months. And then it'd be another two mm. months. And when you're learning, yeah, it's you like need a that lot every of time. Day. So now that we have this shop, I put it upstairs and now I can just do it whenever I want. That's cool to have like your own little studio set up in different, for all the different types of art you do, you have mm-hmm. these spaces that are already set up. So it's like ready to go. Bam. Turn yeah. it, turn the lights on and turn the power on. You're ready. Yeah. Instead of like, like, like what this. I had to do right now, just set all this up for this yeah. podcast. <laughs> if you had to do that every time you wanted to do something, it would be a less likely yeah usually for a little bit i was just grabbing my backpack with all my tattooing stuff and we would be like tattoos and barbecues or whatever <laughs> you know i'm like just anything yeah i'm like it might not be great but like just because i almost i almost went and got a tattoo machine right before uh-huh. he walked up to me and i was just gonna tattoo fruit in my house like it's mm. never been a money thing for me it was more of like i've always looked up to tattooers mm-hmm. and now that i tattoo now i just really look up to painters like now that i've gone here and I've done all this. And I'm like, holy shit, this is so hard. And yeah. then I've gone over to tattooing. I'm like really looking at painters now. And I have yeah. like way more respect. Which kind of sounds weird because like I love tattooing and stuff. But something about paint just kind of. I, I think I could, I I could agree to that. Because like, I probably have the reverse where I look at like tattooing and other art forms as more interesting to me. But. I've also, you know, got 20 plus years in in the paint industry. Yeah. And so to me, it's like, it's, it's the hometown. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like, it's always there, but I kind of want to go see what the rest of the world's like. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and I've only been painting for like seven years. Yeah. I've never been in it. I've never like looked at it. So it's like, I kind of had, I've always been looking at tattooing. Yeah. I'm like, well, these are, these paint jobs are fucking crazy and I love them, you know? Well, it's, it's almost like the entire custom culture is this melting pot of tattooing, you know, fine art, graffiti art, uh, music, you know, cars, bikes, motors, all this different stuff. It's like all in the same melting pot of people. Yeah. And I think that the cross flow of inspiration comes in a lot of different ways, you know, where you mm-hmm. can find your way into these different pockets within this realm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and they all can like intertwine. Yeah. Like anybody, well, even with tattooing, you can't like put a tattoo on a paint job, but like whoever is getting that paint job, usually wants a tattoo you yeah, know what i mean yeah. it's like all its own little vibe i guess i don't know yeah you can give them a trifecta of art like I'll paint your skin, body bite. I'll paint your, yeah. <laughs> so you know you after school you kind of like dabbled in trying to do you know tattooing um how was like once you got up and running with that how has tattooing been for you um in the beginning it was really stressful because mm-hmm. tattooing scares me it's really hard i didn't know if it would like i expected it to be hard but not in the way that you would let, I thought, you know, mm-hmm. someone made a good point. Like that person's going through pain and you're touching them. You're like absorbing their yeah. energy and I do not like hurting people. So <laughs> I numb people up, you know, yeah. I'm like, I don't care if you want it or not. I'm going to kind of help yeah, you with that. Makes- but, um, in the beginning it was more like traditional stuff, just trying to like find what I want to do. And now I know what I want to do. So now it's just like a matter of learning how to design it. Mm-hmm learning how to lay it down and kind of going for it, you know, Mm -hmm. because yeah, I want to do like big full body suits with some geometric or a little bit of Japanese or I don't, there's so many things. You know, the geometric stuff. And obviously that's very prevalent in your style of paint work as well. Mm -hmm. But that's also, I remember seeing that, that whole style kind of emerging in the tattoo culture as well, Mm -hmm. where I don't like, forgive me for not knowing the exact terminology, but it's like, there was this like almost strange. It was almost like a, an art form that turned into a tattoo form. Mm-hmm. And now it's kind of, now you're kind of bringing it into the motorcycle space, which I guess it lends itself to like fitting in panels, mm-hmm. you know? And I remember, you know, like, like even like your hand tattoo, it's just all 
It's just a bunch of lines. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot. I kind of went for that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, was that just something that you fell into as far as like uh, the attractiveness to that style? Yeah, well, there's something about painting a bike and um, I'm like looking at my bike. For geom- like geometrics stuff, I don't like a lot of like repetitive patterns. Mm-hmm. I like stuff that kind of like messes with your eyes. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So when you have like metal flake and then you got gold leaf and then you got these patterns that mm-hmm. are like making your eyes, yeah. you know, cross. And then it's hard to find a focal point because it, it takes you on a ride almost. Yeah. You know it makes your eyes like, you know, so it's like all these moving parts. And I've also really liked, um, really high contrast stuff. So with a lot of the patterns that I do use, it's just like black and white yeah. with a little bit of shading that kind of throws your eyes. But yeah, that's, that's one thing. Like I haven't found, there's a lot of good geometric artists out there, but for me, I think my stuff's going to look a lot more different because it's more of the, the illusion part of yeah. it that I really like. So by having all these like trippy illusions and then maybe having something laying on top of it and you have mm. stuff going behind it and underneath it. Yeah. It's it adds like, a lot of depth and, yeah. and, uh, and it's super high mean. contrast. So it's like, you can't miss it. You can't miss it. Like uh-huh. it, it, it messes with your eyes a little bit, but it also is what it is. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. No, that, it perfectly lends itself to the, you know, I've seen like through your Instagram, like different styles and like tops of tanks. It's got like the, yeah, exactly. It's like, I feel like I'm doing gang signs, like trying yeah. to fucking talk, but it about, goes like shit goes underneath. It goes yeah. over top. It like, with some of them, they look like they're just starting to move, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I don't know. I didn't, I never thought I would like sparkly stuff or trippy stuff. And all of a yeah. sudden I saw it and I'm like, damn. <laughs> I'm like, that's. Yeah, that's a good point. Sick. I never really thought about that because, you know, custom paint to really truly love it. You almost got to fall in love with colors mm-hmm. and combinations that are maybe not something you'd ever wear. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But Most you can appreciate are, it. Yeah. Like, Black. Damn, Same. I'm, black I'm a neutral person you know <laughs> tried what I mean? an orange beanie today i'm like no i can't do it <laughs> it's too much <laughs> i've got a red beanie i've been wearing around and uh i'm so fucking like i love it it's comfortable but it's <laughs> you look in the mirror and you're like i don't like, know if i can. it's just weird <laughs> i just i don't know i'm trying to step out of my box too because i feel like i've just gotten so comfortable with black t-shirts or a white t-shirt or just you know grays and finding a way to bring color into my life is, is, is as, as far as like my everyday wardrobe, if you will. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's like something I've been wanting to kind of break out of my own show with that. You know just what I'm saying? Just kind of do it. Just go buy some yeah. pink pants. I don't know if I'm ready for that. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's like full chopper guy shit. I'm not, I don't want to draw attention. I, it's a, it's, I feel like I'm drawing attention to myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It feels like, I don't know. I used to dress all crazy and whatever. And I just felt like I was like trying too hard. Mm-hmm. And when I wore black, I'm like, it's just, yeah. Just black. I like you know? the whole concept of like the Steve Jobs, same clothing, just he's 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 got shit to do. He ain't got time to think about what I'm wearing yeah. today, you know? But I try to have that vibe like I'm that same way, but I really spend like forty five minutes putting an outfit together. <laughs> Looking and in the ends mirror up being black and gray every <laughs> yeah. time. I but, get it. Yeah. Um Yeah, so okay, so you start painting seven years ago. Yeah, I think it's about about r- around that. there. Yep. And so 16, 15 ish, mm-hmm. what can you remember any of the things that kind of like really caught your eye and made you want to dabble in that world? Was there any like certain people or yeah. things you got kind of, you know, privy to or saw or whatever the fuck, you know? Yeah. Um, so I never, I've always like, I, I started getting into bikes. Um, and I never really looked at paint jobs like that. Like I, I just wanted a black bike, you know? Yeah. And then, so my husband now, he's my boyfriend at the time, he owns a motorcycle shop. So Mm -hmm. like I got this airbrush and I'm like, I just want to try like a different style of art. Mm -hmm. So I got like a tank and I was starting to airbrush on it and like messing around with it. Um, And I still wasn't planning on painting bikes, Mm -hmm. but like he put the pieces together. He's like, why don't you just paint bikes for us? Yeah. And the first thing I said is I can quit my job. Like, I'm like, that's all I cared about because I was a server yeah, and I hated it. I was like trying to tattoo. That didn't work out. Nothing was lining up, got kicked out of college. And I'm like, okay, I'm like not letting this go. I'm like, I'm working my ass off. Immediately started YouTubing stuff. Then I had a dude, one of his friends, he used to have a shop with his dad 
but he had all this stuff he wasn't using. So he's like, I'll just teach you the basics. Mm -hmm. And then I immediately airbrushed for his brother, um, a, wo a naked woman laying on bacon. And I'm like, okay, there's a little <laughs> bit of custom, like, so we can have fun with it. Yeah. And then after that, I saw, I, I forgot, I think it was Adam time warp. I okay. saw one of his paint jobs and it, his stuff is so pretty. It's like colorful, it's sparkly. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, started looking into that. And then I kind of went that way. Do you think that like, because you started dabbling in it, it opened your appreciation for the more colorful mm -hmm. shit basically? Yeah. And I really like, I don't know. I'm trying to be, you know, like those old like low rider cars. Yeah. The whole car is green, but it shifts di like different tones of green. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get there. Cause that's a hard thing to do. They make it look easy. Yeah. But it's so hard not to use a little bit of black in your paint job. Or, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if the technical term is monochromatic, but it's, I mean, that would make sense. You know, it's, it's all within a, the same color family. Right. And that style is, I've always felt like is the most classy approach to paint jobs. It's yeah. always going to appeal to a bigger wallet in my opinion. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, I've always said this, like a mini truck style of paint job where you got, bright yellow and lime green and purple and orange and all this crazy shit and Swiss cheese and all these things going <laughs> yeah. on. It's like artistically, it's like, yeah, that's cool, but I don't want to drive that down the street because it's too much. It's it looks cartoony. I've always used yeah. that word. I'm like, I've always tried to veer away from the cartoony vibe yeah. and more toward like the classic baller vibe. You yeah. know, like, like you were saying, it's like the, uh, the more simplistic and subtle, but still detailed mm -hmm. is like the most hard thing to do the most hard. It's, it's very hard to do. Um, but it also, it, it attracts, uh, like I've always felt like it attracts a, a, a wealthier client, which yeah. uh, sounds kind of pretentious or a little bit capitalistic to go at, no, but, but you know, they know what they money. want and they can yeah. get whatever. And for me, I'm like, those look the nicest. They look like they were meant to be like that. And mm -hmm. to do that, right. Instead of like, like you said, just adding, it's like this paint job has all of the colors and they're all just really color blocky. And yeah, open the paint cabinet. And you're like, all right, I got all this. Let's just go put it on a paint a job. Here, here and there. Yeah. Get it out. And sometimes it's as simple as using like a solid color, a pearl coat, a flake coat, and then like maybe a small metallic coat. Having of those same ghosted with yeah, like, yeah. Sometimes like, in the same family of those greens or blues and that's all it is, mm -hmm. you know, and then maybe you like, you get a little crazy and you add like a purple pinstripe like I do with everything. Yeah. And, well, and I think that stuff is like, you need it like that bike over there. Yeah. It's all grays, a little bit of gold, but then it has a little red in it. Yeah. yeah. But then it looks even because mm -hmm. without that red, it's just too cold almost, you know, it yeah. needs like, you need to know, not that I know when, but you need to know when to add those little things or yeah for sure i've always felt like pinstripes make or break paint jobs mm -hmm. like it sometimes is the one chance that the guy that's like us when we dress mm -hmm. can take that chance of throwing the red Wear beanie that on. red beanie <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i think i got my gray one or my brown one on today <laughs> um but yeah that's kind of like one thing that i've always liked and for some reason almost every style of paint job i do purple pinstripes go with it and so i yep almost every personal bike has a purple pinstripe. Mm -hmm. um, and then also like it, when you start, we were talking about pinstriping earlier, some colors pinstripe easier than others. I don't know yet, yeah. but I'm going to get into it. Like, so house of color, which is what I use for striping. Some of the colors are harder to get to that sweet spot of being able to pull lines. Yep. And some of it, you can just open the can and go to town and purple is one of those. The easy ones. Yeah. I feel like wouldn't it be like the the lighter colors, like the whites, like the colors mm, that need to be more opaque? White's a little bit of a pain in the ass. Yellow's a pain in the ass. Orange is the worst for for a house of color. Red's but like really the good. The deeper colors, wouldn't those be easier? Because I feel like that would be like like tattooing ink. Mm. Like the the lighter, the more it's like harder to be yeah, opaque. Yeah. It's like thick and gooey and I don't well, know. It's like I the yellow, know. like like some of the brighter colors are thin. So when you try oh, to stripe so over graphics, like you almost got to do it twice because it's, that's you can see the line in between it or the colors, you know, so it's kind of a weird one. Haven't even gone in. Like, yeah, I made my husband do that with do the, the bugler. bugler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he killed it. So I'm like, okay, we're there. Yeah. But now I need, I need to, you know, I feel like all the good painters I look up to can paint and they can pinstripe. Yeah. And I, I, I've always loved, so there's a lot of really badass painters that they grew up as pinstripers or sign painters mm -hmm. and they've always kind of been my favorite like 
people like in the yeah. game. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, Jeremy from Lucky Strike, he's a traditional pinstriper that, you know, when you when you go through the sign painting processes of what that was, yeah. it teaches you to be very precise on things. And then that translates to his style where he has a very crisp and clean look. Yeah. Crisp and clean. Sorry. My, my lips are blended it. together. <laughs> yeah. Feels weird. Um, same thing with Valley Customs. Yeah. I think he t- had told me once his dad was a striper, mm-hmm. and he kind of came into that space as well. So that's why he has very clean looks. And Taylor Schultz, another one. Yeah. He started more striping and then got into painting. Yeah, he showed me a couple of his techniques mm-hmm. that I've tried, and then I just stopped doing it for a minute. But I don't know. This is kind of random or on point or whatever. But I feel like like tattooers, I'm like, pinstripers have a vibe. Yeah. You know, like they're just like they have the freedom to walk up to your car, make it really cool and walk away without yeah. charging you $20,000, you know, yeah, or whatever exactly. it's going to be. Well, like Darren McKay, you ever met him? No, but he's, I love his artwork. He's, yeah, he's a, he's a good tattoo or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got, he's got it all. He's just, he's just the, the best example of leaning into what he's good at. And mm-hmm. then it's a brand now. Like you yeah. see when he was, I don't know if he does a lot of shirts still, but when he would do the designs and people would make shirts out of them all the mm-hmm. time, you could always like, tell it in a crowd like that's a McKeg style oh or, I can tell his you know artwork I mean? yeah 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 he's I love his and it's like his a lot of it's just like high contrast mm-hmm. it's like there's a line there's not a lot of shading it's just like cool old school chopper looking yeah stuff yeah it's like sometimes the simplistic stuff is like more appealing than the you know well I feel like it's dying off you know so the fact that he's still bringing that around because everybody's getting so like technical with their stuff oh yeah and I feel like this is that's like I don't know. In a way, it's like really traditional biker art. Oh, yeah. You know? Well, that's kind of what's happening, too, in photography, is that a lot of people that are really in love with the art of photography are going back to film. Because mm-hmm. it, it like, it, like these digital cameras that we have right here, you take a picture of the shit is, like, you can see the pores on your skin yeah. if you zoom in. But on film, it's like the opposite of the direction everything's gone. Mm-hmm. Everything's got more clean and crisp and 4K and 8K and yeah, so nice and high resolution. And then film is like grainy and just. And you're like, I can't wrap my head around it yet, but I got to get into yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got a film camera that I, I shoot with that yeah. I in in the car, and um, I do like the vibe. But I I am trying to get to that point where I allow myself to for it to look that way because that's mm-hmm. been my whole learning process is to try to get it as clean and crisp and yeah. and badass as possible. And it's kind of like counterintuitive to go backwards. But, you know, in, in regards to what we, what we're just talking about with, uh, you know, people going back to old styles of art for more mm-hmm. of a, more of a, I don't know, I hate using the word vibe, but more of a. I mean, it is though. It's a vibe, but it that is. just seems like it's too easy to say it that way. Uh, I get what you're saying. More soul. Yeah. You know? Yep. It, like, brings back all those, like, old Chopper magazines. Yeah, like and, David Mann paintings, right? Yeah. Like, when you look, it's it's kind of cartoony, mm-hmm. but it's at a point where it's, like, it, it's the, it captures what you really want to experience. So, yeah. if it was all realism, it would just be a photograph. Well, and everything is getting so, like, almost, like, mechanical looking these days. Like, even my artwork, it's all, like, geometric shapes for the most part, mm-hmm. you know? So, when you bring back, like, that that stuff it just kind of it's like old school yeah cool shit you know i yeah, love I feel his artwork you on that. so after you like started painting like what was some of the first hardships that you had like as far as learning the paint like not just the custom but the all the other shit that nobody ever really talks about you know what i'm saying um if i would have known what i had to do to get into painting yeah i would have definitely thought twice about it i definitely wouldn't have not done it but yeah it was just like in the beginning, it was trying to figure out, like, where to paint, where to do it, how to find customers, how to get good quick, you know? Because mm-hmm. at that point, like, Seth's shop's a pretty well-known shop, so they can't put shitty paint on their stuff, you know? Yeah. And it was, like, I don't know, like, figuring out where to do it at and then building out a shop and painting in my backyard in 100-degree weather yeah. for, like, the whole summer. And then um, I built up this whole shop, my first one, and then I was walking next door. Luckily, my neighbor had a paint booth. Mm. So I, he would just let me use his and paint yeah. and rent. And then my second shop, which was a shit show, um, which is where his shop is now. We mm. all took like, there was a barber shop. They had the main shop. And then me and my friend built walls for the, uh, the back of the shop. 
Mm-hmm. So she, my girlfriend owns the Lolitas and then I had my paint. Mm-hmm. So we built every wall and then right when I was like about to get approved, like this fire marshal came in and he was like giving me shit and he red tagged me. Damn. He ended up getting fired by the chief for being a dick to me. Because, yeah, he just was like on one. Um, but right before I was about to get approved, they're like, the guy was like, I'm moving. You have no time to put this in there. So mm. like getting it zoned, we had to like cut it down. We had to like do all this stuff. You know, you're jumping through hoops. It's just, it's really, it was really hard, you know? Yeah. And especially paint. Like it took me like a year to figure out how to get paint to even stick together yeah. because I'd go to my paint store and be like, how do I do this? <laughs> and yeah. they, you know, they're working at the counter and they're like, I don't know, try this. Yeah. So, yeah. A lot of trial and error for sure. Yeah. But you know, it was all fun. And at that point it was cool to be able to, I remember I was sitting down with one of my friends and he pretty much told me like the happiest he's ever been was like the brokest he's ever been. Mm-hmm. And that's when I was working in the next day, I just went and like quit my job. And then I was super broke, but I mean, it's all worked out. Like we've worked our asses off up yeah. until, well, still now, but this shop, and yeah, badass shop now. Yeah, I mean, you know? it's a lot, and I don't know if we need this big of a shop now, but... I, I have, my shop is, the like, from your lift right there to the wall, mm-hmm. and maybe that deep, like, that only. Honestly, though, yeah. that's, like, all you need, especially if you're working on bikes. Like, yeah. Like I said, I don't know if we would Oh, yeah, I got a lot of cars here, yeah. Yeah, and it, it does, like, having space does help us make more money, but my shop before is 500 square feet. Yeah, that's this is five thousand. So I'm yeah. like, what am I doing? And so Seth's like, let's just let's do it together. Because he was, he still owns that shop, but his brother runs it. Mm-hmm. So now we have the freedom to do what we want. So yeah. now all these doors are opening to like, I'm babbling, aren't I? But no, yeah, how do we, <laughs> like, what can we do with the shop now that we have this huge space? I'm like, let's make our own custom cars. Let's learn upholstery. Let's. And let's like maybe flip cars on the side to keep people out of our shop so we don't yeah. have to work with too many people, you know? Yeah. But yeah, like I said, I don't think we need this big of a shop, but it is what it is now. It's got, I mean, like you said, you have your studio for your tattooing, for your airbrushing. You got the booth. That way you can, you know, maintain a quality of mm-hmm. paint and whatnot. And then you got plenty of space to fuck around in here and do shit. Yeah, we know? got all our bikes. We got our van. We yeah. got some cars that we're going to. And we still have like plenty of work if we need it, you know, but the fact that we opened up the shop, like I was, I went, if you want to hear about this yeah. whole spiel. Um, so the shop came up and I was already pregnant, <laughs> you know what I mean? So we're like, okay, I guess we're going to do both. Yeah. Um, baby's due in October. We get to take over in June. So we have like no time to set up, get yeah. going and make more money that we've ever made because we have to pay for the shop. So like I went and painted that jet car mm-hmm. and while I was gone, Seth sold my paint booth, moved me out, put me in a little like a enclosed trailer. Cause I didn't, yeah. you know, 500 square feet, little yeah. box. <laughs> and then when I came back, I came in here, started learning from Johnny on how to paint cars. Cause I've never done it. I'm like, yeah. I just want to watch how you like clear or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And then when he finally moved out, we backed in my little trailer <laughs> And it was like smaller than that. <laughs> and I'm like, that's all I got. I got a couple yeah. stools. I got my airbrushes and my paint guns. Here we go, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I worked up until, oh, and then we got that Lincoln Zephyr. And that's pretty much the first car I learned on. Mm. And I worked until I was like, like eight and a half months pregnant. <laughs> you so how long did you take off once you had the baby? We both took off. Honestly, it was like a week and a half because we kind of got a <laughs> little like stir crazy. Uh-huh. But, you know, we work together. So I'm like, even if we go to the shop and organize. Yeah. So like yeah. after a week and a half, we started coming back. But honestly, it felt like it was like a full three months before we were like. Like back into operation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's wild. Um, it was a shit show of a year. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't imagine. Like that, that, that's a wild thing because I couldn't imagine like. And and this is obvious, but like if I had a baby and I just couldn't, like I physically had to be there to do that. And then even with like you feeding and stuff now, it's like. It's full time job. It's a lot of job. Yeah, it's hard. And painting is toxic. Yeah, it's like, what do you do? You start clear coating and then you got to like, you got to hopefully fit this in between a clear coat session. <laughs> yeah. So like it's weird because like too, because like we can't have her here a lot because it's yeah. like a toxic place. Like even when I was painting, I look like an astronaut, like nothing. Yeah. I was so careful. 
because and that's why I didn't post about it because I'm like I don't know if people are gonna yeah, like assume people, I'm not yeah. taking care like taking the right precautions I went overboard mm-hmm. I went so overboard but um yeah we we have like bottles and stuff but yeah right now it's either I'm working or he's working or he'll bring her to me mm-hmm. and I mean it's a lot but yeah it's better than being super pregnant in the summer and opening up a shop so I'm like I almost feel like yeah I can fit in my pants a little bit again, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm getting back to where I was, but it was, yeah, being that's, pregnant's crazy enough, but it was. And it's trying to have like build all this. I mean, the, the, you know, you were talking about the paint shop processes and like in the different uh, ways that you've had to kind of go about trying to set up an, a place to work. And, and I, I've got stories like that too, from, mm-hmm. you know, I, the first bike I ever painted on my own, I painted in a friend's, parents house 10 by 10 shed in the backyard where they kept their lawnmower so i had to put paper down or plastic on their lawnmowers and then try to paint the parts and shit and it's have you done that through the winter too yeah walking it in and out of the house or whatever i didn't have to do do? it through the winter but but yeah that there's like all these things and it's so and then i've I've had to paint bikes in like you know how like sometimes they'll have those strip mall shops like the industrial buildings and they'll have like the the walk-in like eight by eight little room like almost like a storage kind of like a storage thing so they'll have like the, the bay doors oh no but they'll have like the front room and yeah, yeah. it's supposed to be the office yeah and i painted bikes in that before yeah. um i've had i've gone to shops where like when i started flying and painting bikes they'd be a bike shop and they would just take a corner and frame and then put plastic up mm-hmm. and then open the back door and put a fan going out honestly it works I mean, pretty fucking good yeah. actually you we know? were get, before the shop came up i'm like let's get a garage we'll paint at night we'll have like a dust place yeah and just paint on the weekends like because there's so many hoops you got to jump through yeah like painting it's so fumey like yeah painting in sheds or whatever you yeah. got to do like you can't just get a sh- the perfect setup right away well the other thing about like i guess for people listening or watching whatever <laughs> i almost <laughs> forgot about yeah. that too um so custom like when you're a custom painter right like the amount of paint that you go through versus like uh, a collision center like it, it's minute like it's yeah. so small like it's a fraction of what they go through mm-hmm. but we have all the same regulations because of working with the chemicals yeah but if you have you know a handful of quarts of paint versus mm-hmm. they have rooms yeah of stored paint and, and they're going like, all day every day every day like the, there's a lot more risk there than it is for a custom paint so it's almost like i wish there was like another kind of category you can be put in i know a lot of people that just try to open up their place as a studio an I mean, art studio that's smart and like, say well i in here we use uh you know we spray water base canvases with you know gesso and stuff like that mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah yeah and then just hide the because since you're not you, you don't have like a whole wall of mixing bank or anything like that. you might have a mixing bank in there but i don't and mm-hmm. it's like I can hide that shit. Yeah. That's, yeah. I was like, I was going to have water based paint laying around and just be like, this is what we do sometimes. We do t shirts. <laughs> yeah. I, I paint t shirts yeah. and just have a bunch of t shirts on the wall. But yeah, I'm like, I, even when I was like, ex- I've explained it to some people and I'm like, honestly, painting is like the lower, like, you, I don't do a lot of painting. Yeah. It's a lot of sanding and a lot of masking. Yeah. And a little bit of painting. And, but this is the most expensive tool you have in the shop. Right. Mm-hmm. And it looks like a shed. Like <laughs> yeah. people see it and they're like, that's why you got the shop. I have shit all over the ground, you know, <laughs> obviously trashing it. But I'm like, that metal At least box, it's contained in there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to clean it eventually. But <laughs> <laughs> they can't see it on the camera. Good, so. good, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that little metal box, like people have no idea what goes into putting that. Because yeah. like, I don't know how it is everywhere else, but I assume it's the same. You need to hire a professional to install it. Yeah. I was, I've built a couple of them. Yeah. And, uh. Not with like your big heating system that you have here. Is that heating and the suction? Yeah, yeah it was all okay. There. Yeah, it's nice. It gets hot in there too. That's good. But um, what was I? I forgot. <laughs> I uh, tired, yeah, the the building it like I've had to tear them down. Like I bought used ones before. Mm-hmm. Actually, my first FXR I ever bought, I had bought a paint booth and then I never got a chance to put it up in my shop. Yeah, and I decided to downsize. Mm-hmm. So then I ended up selling the paint booth and using the money to buy my first FXR. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, and I've never I got a homemade paint booth right now cuz I, I live mean, I live in the in like in the county. Like I'm not in the city anymore. Mm-hmm. And so in the county, you just got to have fire extinguishers. Yeah, and I wish that was the case yeah, around here. Yeah, I mean here. you could you're right. 
here. I would get caught. Like we don't even, we don't have some licensing right now. So our doors are locked, you know, and yeah. we're just like no signage, but someone wanted to get a paint booth like this. I was talking to Johnny about it and they said, you know, like this setup, he said it was like 15 grand, but to get it installed in Salt Lake, he's like, it was like 80,000. Damn. It's like, I was like, yeah, I can't not. You know, and maybe that's not the same for everywhere, but that's it's, what, it's pretty similar. Yeah, yeah, that's what he was looking at, and I'm like, this is just a, this is a dude wanting to paint, and now yeah. he's a hundred thousand dollars in a metal box. Yeah, it's yeah. like our next move is we're gonna get some land, have a garage. And that's my. That's where I plan to do as well. Yeah, like so. just best setup. You know, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like uh, I mean I I've like I said I have a homemade paint booth right that I it's basically a wood frame paint booth. It's got the same cross flow situation as far as sucking in the air and getting rid of it. And it works great mm -hmm. for me. Cause I really do bikes and helmets only. Yeah. Like I, I don't even have front doors like this. I just have a walk in door. I mean, I feel like that's all you need. Yeah. Cause this like I so said, overboard. no cars coming in and out, no yeah. bumpers, no hoods. Um, but yes, what I want to do is once I do I think it's get a bird, sorry, it's a bird. <laughs> I don't I, know. It sounds it's like a right. raccoon or something. <laughs> this is the joys of podcasting. So, yeah. um, what I do plan to do is, like you just said, at, at some point, whenever I figure out where I want to live, I do want to get a house with a nice, you know, 15, 2,000 square foot shop behind yeah. it. And because even though I don't want to paint on high volume forever, which I don't really do now, but I never want to stop painting. Yeah. Like I love it. Yeah. And it's like the le the less I do of it, the more I want to do it. You know what I mean? No, I get that. When I was got a little more into tattooing, I was like, ooh, that's looking pretty good over there, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So switching off. But yeah, I'm like, I want to get some land in the middle of a forest and just build a huge garage and have a little house. Yeah. And then, yeah, because like out of that shop, you can do anything you want, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, oh, that's the way to go, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, are you are you originally from Salt Lake forever? The uh, whole thing or what? Uh, I'm actually Canadian, so. Canadian? Yeah. Nice. I'm super nice, as everyone assumes. <laughs> um, you don't probably, have the accent, though, like the A or If I get drunk, about, I do. Yeah. How do you say <laughs> yeah. It comes out a little bit. What if part I drink, of Canada but, were you from originally? Um, so a lot of people don't know where it's at. Um, it's Hay River, uh -huh. but it's in the Northwest Territories. Okay. Have you seen Ice Road Truckers? Damn. Wait. So that's my dad's old job, and those dudes are my old babysitters pretty much. What? Yeah. So it's like polar bears and... Holy like shit. my like you're way up north. Yeah, it's and I, you know I moved here when I was like eight, so okay. I've I've been here for a really long time. But yeah, my birth certificate's like squares and it's Inuit, so it's like oh, okay. it's kind of crazy. But none of my family lives there; they live in like Alberta or mm. you know. Were you just there because your dad was in? He got a job, a job situation. Yeah, so we lived in like a hotel, and mm. and then we moved here, and then I've been here ever since. But like all my, I don't want to say favorite family. A lot of family that I love is yeah. all in Canada, so okay, yeah, I get to go up there. Quite Do you a think bit. about moving back up there into the like the forest kind of situation, or is it? I want that scene because I've every time like when I was younger going to Canada or like going and visiting my aunts and uncles or whatever was always like the best part uh -huh. for me. So yeah, I'm like I want that landscape. I want the trees. I want the open. Yeah. I just I like I want to live like. <laughs> Like a minimalist the grid, almost kind of yeah. with a big custom paint shop, but yeah. with my little garden, you know. <laughs> I hear you. No, that's right. That's that's actually pretty dope. I mean, I struggle with that too. Like, cause it, part of me wants to live in a little bit more of a rural area, but I'm such a social person mm -hmm. that I do kind of crave the ability to like for like this. Like, I don't bring my own lunch to work because I'm alone all day long at the shop. Yeah. That I want to go sit in a Chipotle. And, and just be and, around people. Yeah, you know feel what I'm saying? it. Yep. Yeah. So I don't know. It's kind of a, I don't know. I have a, a, a battling duality in my head of like things that I want to have. Like yeah. part of me wants this, like you said. I mean, even if you drive 30 minutes, you can get both. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I'm like, I bet you can't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we live, I live 30 miles south of Dallas, down, like the downtown Dallas area. Okay. And we're kind of on the cusp of the end of the suburbs and the beginning of the country. Okay. Um, but it's still kind of a shit show. Yeah. You know, Dallas is a lot of fucking people there. Like just perfect for what you need at the yeah. time. Probably. Yeah. I mean, like we have a huge motorcycle community, a mm -hmm. huge, we've always, even back in the, the, the TV chopper days of the early two thousands, mm -hmm. we had a lot of major players there. Um, there was a iron horse, which was a, a company that made custom choppers that were 
like you Sounds could familiar. finance. Like they were like Big Dog and yep. those kind of companies that just made choppers that you can like, like you're buying a brand new Harley, but it was a chopper, right? Yeah. And so they had those, that's where a lot of custom painters came from in Dallas area because they all worked at these big places that did massive amounts of paint jobs. Yeah. Like one dude's job was literally to lay out flames on tank after tank after tank after tank. And another dude's job was to stripe each one of those. Takes the fun right out of it. <laughs> but it's it's like a fast track to being really good at something too. Oh though. yeah, that is, so, that's a good point. I mean, for context, like uh, I was, I, I feel like I, I got pretty good in pre YouTube days of mm -hmm. custom painting and airbrushing because I was in a, a place where every day I was picking up an airbrush to work. Yeah. You know, every day I'm doing a drop shadow or, you know, a skull or a pirate theme or a dragon or some <laughs> shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so you just kind of get good at it. Kind of, you know, I mean, it's like repetition. repetition it's going to make yeah. you really good at anything. That's what I'm lacking right now. I'm trying yeah. to do too many things and I don't get a hone in on one thing too much. Yeah. And that's how you get good. At, you need to be good at least one thing, you know. Even though I, I know people told me that when I was younger, like in my 20s, mm -hmm. I still never registered. And now as I'm, you know, 40 now and I understand that about learning something. Yeah. That if I just make myself do it consistently, I'll be good at it. Even if it's not something you want to do. Yeah. You know, just like circles or what we we're talking yeah, about yeah. before connecting the dots with an airbrush. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like going home and just having a pinstriping brush there. And just striping. Yeah. Yep. And that's what I plan on doing. I mean, I, I, I've been striping since 2004 and I still am very, very, that's my most insecure skill in custom paint. For real? Yeah. I feel like I've seen your work and it's looks super clean. It, it's, I guess maybe I'm, I'm trying to hold myself up to a, oh, a certain, some of the people yep. that I know that are in that world. And, and uh, I guess since I know so many of them, I feel like everybody's good at that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. No, I it's get like, it. Why am I, why am I not that good? You know, <laughs> yeah. well, like when it comes to doing stripe, like designs with pinstriping, uh -huh. like I've watched Jeremy and Monty Roach and these guys just sit there and go to town mm -hmm. with one line in the middle, like a piece of tape. Me, I draw it. Yeah. And I've, then with like a pencil, right? You yeah. Can, okay. I've been looking into it. I'm like, yeah. I think you can just do it with a pencil. Cause yeah. So because I don't do it a lot, I feel like I can draw it. And get all my spacing right mm -hmm. and then transfer it and then just trace it with the pinstripe brush. I mean, honestly, I used to think that way about art. You know, I felt like I was like cheating if I like did certain things. Yeah. But it's it's just like part of the process. Like some people can do it because they've been doing it for years. But I don't think I think that's just a part of it. Part of it. Yeah. Yeah. For me, you know, especially if you're like because you seem like you're a really detailed dude. Mm -hmm. um, you can get all your measurements perfectly because mm -hmm. I bet if you you know, just went for it. Something might be a little off. And then you, for well, me, see, I'd be like, take it off, redo it. You know? Exactly. So what I said, what I noticed is like, yeah, some of those other guys will do a design and I'll notice where they're off. Yeah. And they're good with it. And I'm just like, man, I wish I had that confidence. Oh, I can see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A pin shaper came in here the other day and he like, he did it really quick. It was great. And then there's a couple of marks where he like, kind of like, like smeared it off. And uh -huh. then just kept it going so you could still see it. And he's like, just stand back and look at it. It's perfect. And I'm like, all I can see is that little, yeah. you know, so. And then, you know, the customer saw it eventually too. But it's just, I mean, some artists are different. Like, yeah. even with tattooing, like the guy that showed me, he's like, draw it on the skin. If you, if your line kind of goes over here, just work with it. You know, yeah. like Bob Ross, happy mistakes. <laughs> and then I'm like, if it's not exactly there the whole thing is fucking ruined, you yeah, know? Yeah. So yeah, I guess that's another part of it. It's just, yeah, that, that is true. Kind of you know, like, like, um, I had an upbringing too, where, uh, you know, the, the shop that I learned from, or I got my start at when I finally left that shop, mm -hmm. uh, this was more in the cutthroat days of the world of this because there was no internet, you mm -hmm. know, that became, he became my biggest enemy, not my enemy, but I was his. Yeah. Right. And so I had, you know, and he was a big name. He he had already been on the TV biker build offs and all this shit. Yeah. And so it's like he would just bad mouth me so bad that everybody that saw my work only looked for the flaws. It was kind of like baked into all their their psyche to like, okay, that's a fast life paint job. So let me see where you fucked yeah, up. Yeah, but at. also like, what do you know? You exactly. Know? And also like it's not a, it's not printed off. Exactly. This is hand done stuff. So like for someone, I've had someone, 
kind of do that to me. They're like, well, what's that? And I'm like, don't worry about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That is like, it's, I usually keep my stuff as clean as I possibly yeah, can, you, can, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, but like I said, there's always that one little thing that goes wrong. And for someone, I mean, if there's a lot of things that are wrong, it's different. Yeah, it's different. But like for someone that doesn't know what they're doing to point out your shit when it's this little thing out of this whole beautiful paint yeah. job, there was mainly one person I'm like thinking about, you know, that's kind of, but yeah. Well, yeah. That's, I know what you mean though. It's like, it, it sucks because there's some things that are uh, there. I don't believe there's a perfect paint job. Yeah. Quality as far as finish work or artwork. It's, mm -hmm. there's always the element of human error that happens with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, even the best pinstripers I see there, I see flaws in their work. Yeah. You know? you're, you're not um, a machine. Like exactly. But it's like, once you kind of get out of that space where people are looking for your flaws. And I think that's a, I think that's something a lot of young, younger artists go through mm -hmm. when they're trying to break into it is that people assume they're not good enough yet. So let me figure out where they're not good at. Yeah. You know, and yeah. It is kind of it's discouraging. It it it's it's part of that whole emotional roller coaster of being creative and doing custom paint is that you, you know, you're you're hoping that you don't have that many flaws in it as you're kind of on the downwards slope, and then as it starts to kind of move forward and up, when you start to love it and it's coming together and yeah, and they like the pictures, the progress, and you're hitting that high, you know, and then next thing you know, it's like oh, I don't know, it's it's such a shit show sometimes. Well, sometimes when you're starting off, people are judging you harder. And then when you get good, I almost feel like, yeah, you can let this like shit show go. And they're like, oh my God, thank you so much. Dude, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to, that's I, what I'm trying to get. <laughs> yeah, Same. <laughs> um, I saw a painter once, a uh, real famous painter, one of the, the f most famous painters in the motorcycle paint game. He, um, which he's a good dude and I'm not, I'm not talking shit, but I saw a bike he had did for another shop across the country. And I was there doing a podcast with him. They were getting ready to go to born free. And on the dash, there was literally what looked like a fly <laughs> or some kind of small gnat style bug right on the dash in the middle. Like what you look down at. Yeah. And right. it wasn't like it was on top of a gold leaf or some kind of really difficult color to fix. Yeah. And it probably would have sanded out. Yeah. Like rip off the just, legs. And <laughs> but it was just there. And I was like, I'm sitting in the shop look like, I don't want to be the guy pointing out another person's flaws, but, but may I, can I, this guy is, this out right now? <laughs> he's supposed to be the shit. Yeah. Like, and I was like, wow. And I was like, I guess man, like you got more free reign. People trust you. You got a big name. And if you tell them that they don't know, like, what is yeah. this? They're like, you don't know. Oh, that's Fred. <laughs> yes. He comes with the paint job. That is part of it. That's part of my art, you know, yeah. <laughs> call it. Just don't you let know, him fly You know how impossible it is to get him to land perfectly in the center <laughs> and then clear over him? Yeah. His little legs perfectly where I want them. Leave uh, them what was it? Um, yeah, that that's always just been a hard part about paint. It's like when you work on bikes, I mean, you always have, like as a mechanic, you have the 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 unfortunate, maybe you give it to the customer and they, they treat it like shit and it breaks and they want to blame it on you, right? Mm -hmm. But ultimately, it's kind of, it's Legos, you know? Yeah. Click, 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 go. Yeah. Paint is like such a fucking like maybe maybe the weather's good maybe it will work out <laughs> maybe maybe you got a, a bad batch of clear like yeah. I've had that happen you know uh, maybe the color combination this customer's dead set on doesn't look as good as the one that made them want to you know pick me to paint their bike you know yeah they think that this is going to be exactly they're like I want this but with these colors it's not it's not the it's same. not and yeah. I I I feel like I'm lucky enough I'm in the spot where I can be like. I just tell people like, that's not going to work out. Yeah. And if we don't, if they don't like that idea, then I can be like, there are so many, here's yeah. some good painters that would do great with that. But do you feel like you work better within a certain color palette that fits your style more? Like kind of like how you're saying the high contrast. I mean, I like, I like the, I like other people's ideas because it's when other people tell me to use certain colors that I usually wouldn't use, mm -hmm. it makes me use. Get out of your box. Yeah. Right? Like it makes me, I think it makes me a little bit better. Um, it's the layouts that, mm. and usually I don't have that problem anymore. People usually, I'm like, send me a couple paint jobs that you like. You know, you like that vibe. Send me some like colors that you like and I'll just do my thing. And mm. usually they're, that's they're like the people I like to work with. But back when I was starting, <laughs> there was this one guy, he's like, okay, I want a sugar skull. But instead of those kind of 
like the cool teeth. I was, I was trying, you know, it was on a lane splitter. He's like, I just want like the line with the other lines, like the cheap looking, like someone got a Sharpie and quickly. Oh, kind of like the Harley one that they came out with. Just like the teeth part. Uh You know what I'm saying? Like, so draw like, just like literally a a straight black line from there to there. And then the. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. And then I did these weird flowers. Then he wanted his dog's paw prints coming up. And I'm like, I need this money so bad. I I have to do it. And then he asked me later why I didn't post it. And I'm like, oh, Oh, I forgot to get pictures of it or whatever. I felt, yeah, this is a long time ago. But I'm like, why do you want paw prints? (laughs) But I need this. (laughs) So I'm glad I'm like out of that. Have you, have you dealt with any customers that kind of, like you know how in the tattoo world it turned into where every tattoo had to have some kind of heartfelt story behind it. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, it's an infinity symbol. Calm down. You know what I'm Calm saying? down. But like, do you get that on helmets a lot where people like maybe want to, you know, try to encapsulate some kind of life experience, like their dog or something like that into it, which I'm not downplaying that and say it's dumb, but you know. Yeah. But I mean, there's a better way of remembering your dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I could have, if he gave me some more free reign, I would have maybe not done paw prints. I had some other cool ideas where we can make it all like symmetrical and you get all of what you want, but he yeah. wanted that. Yeah. But yeah, the, I mean, usually not like the other day I had one for a dude and his brother, which I really appreciated. Um, but usually it's just like, I want a cool helmet. Yeah. And yeah. usually they're like, I just want to hang it up. <laughs> like yeah, these true. things are tough, you know, you yeah. can, you can definitely wear them, but yeah, that's, I mean, I've said it a million times, but helmets was one of the things I hated painting the most out of painting because it was, it was always the deal that the customer would like come drop off his bike and then oh, I forgot a couple of things and he shows up with three modular helmets like, Hey, I need you to do these too. I'm like, no. And he's like, well, you know, I just, you know, since you're already painting the bike, can you go ahead and do, I was like, no, man, that's, that's a lot of fucking work right there. Yeah. And he's like, oh, well, you know how, well, how much would you charge me to do them? And I'm like, I don't know, like. 500 each and this is a long time ago when yeah. i didn't want to do it and he's like nah i ain't paying that much helmet's only a hundred dollars okay and i'm like else. <laughs> this is one thing i try to tell everybody all the time and the value of my art is not dictated to the value of your canvas yeah so if you have a honda shadow and you want it painted but you think it's supposed to be cheaper because you have a shadow versus a sportster yeah it's not it doesn't work that way a paint's paint exactly yeah it's your People tell, I've been, you know, everyone's been told you're too expensive or whatever it is. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you don't know what goes into it. Mm-hmm. And if I, I am this price because I can be. So if you don't like it, you can. Yeah. I mean, I can I, point you somewhere else. But that kind of reminds me, like when we first moved in here, this shop would do, they would do a little bit of collision. They would do custom. They would do, you know, they would do kind of a lot of things. Um, and so a lot of people thought we were going to be that. Yeah. So the all these cops came in one day. I thought I was in trouble because like I was like starting to paint and they're like, what are you doing? But they, they wanted me to paint all their helmets oh. and I painted one and I hated it. And I'm like, I'm just like helping. Cause it was actually for a woman cop uh-huh. and she was like the youngest in the force or whatever. Oh, so I'm like, she wrote like she was one of the, yeah. Oh, that's so badass. I was like, yeah, definitely her. And they're like, okay, we have 20 more. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, you guys, this is where I draw the line. And they're like the, you know, yeah, the so you monsters. take them apart. You got to, so a painter opened up right next door and I'm like, okay, cause this used to be the place where I'd send all my, the stuff I didn't want. Cause he's, yeah. he was, he could do everything, you know? Yeah. But now I'm like, I got my guy again, you know, yeah, I'm like, that's over cool. there. Cause yeah, it's weird when you're like we said earlier, when you're like artistic, it only takes a little bit off for you to not have fun anymore. Mm. And then it turns into a job Yeah, and that's exactly what I don't want. So yeah, you want the, you want the job to be, trying to you know be creative and and make something you know take someone's rough ideas and turn it into some kind of thing that they didn't even see but they love it you know and you're proud of it too that's one of the best feelings of doing custom paint is piecing together someone's broken you know idea of what they want Mm -hmm. and that's usually how it comes it's like a a collage of all these things they like and then maybe a couple of colors but then you got to have the ability to to extract all that and ask the right questions and you're working with them and you guys are like yeah Getting along. Really I've always, well. I've always said that a lot of this is, uh, how do you say, um, it's managing expectations as well. Yeah. For people, because sometimes they have wild expectations, you know, and their expectations and their budget don't 
really see eye to eye. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That reminds me a lot of tattooing. Oh, like uh, someone yeah. will have like, I want this, doing this, riding a horse, doing a backflip. I'm like, how about we take out all of it yeah. and do this? Because, and they're like, okay, yeah, <laughs> you know. Well, would you say, I mean, if you think about it, like, uh, it, you know, tattooing and custom paint in, in a similar, similar vein are two things that aren't sitting on a shelf with a price tag underneath it, mm -hmm. right? You're literally buying an artist's time yeah. for create, for something creative on the other end of it. And that's a, it's a gamble on the customer too. I mean, yeah. not, not to be like damn all customers. Cause I know that there's been plenty of people that's gotten done over by tattoo artists, custom painters, all mm -hmm. that shit. Right. But you know, you just got to, yeah, I've had, I've had a couple of weird customers. Like this one girl expected me to do it this way, but didn't tell me to do it that way. So when I gave it to her, she's like, well, don't you usually do this? I'm like, not every time. Yeah. Or there's a one girl person <laughs> and I painted them a helmet and along every step of the way, they showed me what they wanted. And just to talk about crazy people, um, <laughs> And along every step, I'm like, okay, I'm going to put this here. I'm going to do this. How do you like it? Thumbs up the whole time. I love this helmet. Like I did yeah. my, my chopper with this color combo because I like, like I was proud of it, yeah. you know, super clean. And right when it was done, she's like, I don't like it. She's like, can you just give me my deposit back and send me a new helmet? Wow. I'm like, no, absolutely not. You know, I was like, I checked in with you. Yeah. You know, she ended up off like I was like if you don't well this might make me sound like a dick but I, I'm very easy to work with I feel yeah. like um and after a while I was like you know if you don't pay me I'm just gonna sell your helmet yeah. after 30 days this one's mine in Utah you yeah. know and she's like I'm gonna sue you I'm like go for it you know yeah. she disappeared for a couple of days then she came back and she's like so how do I know you're not gonna scratch it I'm like you are a snake like if you even wow. think I would do that you know that was probably one of my worst people that I've worked with but you never know who you're going to get. You never know, even if you do everything right, you yeah. don't know if they're going to be. So it's weird. Like there was no like kind of signs of her craziness during the, the courting process, essentially. Mm -hmm. And you can see like all of our messages are, I'm like, do you like this? Do you agree with this? Do you? Yes. Love it. Thank you. Whatever. The very end. Wow. She's like, I hate it. And it's like a really pretty helmet. Yeah. It had like silver leaf and gold flake in it and matte black and gloss. And it was a Simpson. So it just like, yeah. it just looked sweet, you know? And I'm like, I'll keep it yeah i'll have your helmet you know yeah i do you, have you you know I, I assume you do a lot of paint jobs for women in the motorcycle community as well right yeah is it I, I mean i th probably more than most dudes maybe because uh -huh. i hear a lot of women come to me because they want you know a lady to paint their i, I feel helmet. like that's a it's a good thing because i i have a hard time communicating with w women customers and I'm not trying to like be any kind of way. I just, no. I, I have a hard time. Like what you're dealing with, like have my, if it was that? a dude, I'd be like motherfucking him up and down the street and, and I'd feel fine with that, but I wouldn't really know how to handle that situation, you yeah. know, dealing with a, a woman that's, you know, unhappy, but we followed the steps, you know, mm -hmm. I have a step process too, and I'm easy to work with because I'm very transparent in everything I do. And yeah, if I did all this stuff and you, cause I sketch everything too. So they yeah. see, you where see it's it, go. you get what you see. Yeah. You know, and they just decide at the end they don't like it. I'm like, man, it's, you had plenty of opportunities for us to change the course. You and know? you you approved every step of the way. Yeah. So it's that's that was my craziest. Well, I've had other situations, but it's usually just someone that's like unreasonable. You know. Well, to be fair, like uh, there are you know women do get taken advantage of in the world of auto automotive shit. You know, like cars. You know, just that kind of stuff. Because I guess. I don't want to say like they don't know what they're doing. So they end up getting taken advantage of in that situation. I wouldn't say that, but you know, yeah. same thing with a guy. Like when I, I feel like when I go to get anything done on my Jeep or my car, I feel like I'm getting fucked too. Cause I don't know shit <laughs> yeah. about that world. <laughs> You're like, so I'm yes. just like, I guess I got to be good with that. So there, I mean, there is a thing and not like I'm trying to like, cause like being a woman in this industry has really helped me in a lot of ways yeah. because I do stand out a little bit more, but there's also been like a lot of disrespect, you know, like with just being like, like when we moved in here, there was some stuff with that trip that I went on mm -hmm. and it was right when I didn't have a shop. So I didn't have my own space where I wasn't like, okay, you can leave if you don't, yeah, if you disrespect me or whatever, because I haven't run into it a lot, but there was like this two week period <laughs> and maybe I was like <laughs> pregnant and angry at everybody, but mm -hmm. just like guy after guy and 
John actually pointed out too. And he's like, there was like two people. And he's like, I've never seen them talk to anybody like that. Mm. And I'm like, I guarantee, because there was a PPG guy who wanted me to keep his bank. And he's like, you don't know what you're doing. He's like, this is custom. And I'm like, I'm getting a house of color booth or yeah. a bank. And he's like, no, you don't know what you're doing. I'm like, get your shit and get out of here. Like, I don't. And John was like, I've never seen him talk to anybody like that. It's wild. Yeah. And he came in like hot, you know, he came in swinging. He was like a little agitated. And I'm like, and then there was another worker that was working with him too. And he was giving me all this shit too. Like telling me. No, these are industry people doing this shit. Huh? Yeah. Industry people. Yeah. Damn. And this dude was trying to flame a car and he's never flamed a car in his life. And I'm like, if, if you like walk away, I can flame it and airbrush it. And I'm just here to help you and learn a little bit. And this dude's like, you don't know what you're doing in this, this world. You got to like have everything super symmetrical. And he starts flaming and he's like, thum, 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 thum. you know, it looked like it well, was, it looks he's unnatural. never done it before. Yeah, yeah. So I had to go through, he was just like getting his feelings hurt a little bit. So I was just like, and I usually don't have to deal with it that much, yeah, but there was yeah. just this little period where I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to start scratching some people here. Well, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, when you have a lot more uh, women getting into the male dominated spaces, mm -hmm. especially in the, uh, I mean, just, I guess the more blue collar workspaces. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it, I think it does fuck with a lot. It fucked with mine for a while. Mm -hmm. I had to come to terms with certain things that it's just the way things are, you know, mm -hmm. but it wasn't that I like, Oh fuck women. They're coming into this place. It no. was that it was like, fuck. It was like, well, I guess I'll never get a chance with house of color. You know what I mean? Yeah. Shit like that. And so like a lot of those things, not that I saying I didn't work hard enough for it or whatever, yeah, but yeah, a yeah. lot of these deals that I have gotten, it's like, okay, you're a lady and you know, we want to promote that. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to use that because what, yeah. what kind of brought me back from the cliff edge was I remember what, when that happened in the tattoo scene and the tattoo scene has been so much better for it. And my wife has, she, she has a sleeve. She has, she gets tattoos a lot. And at some point, like, I like that she's been able to work with different women on, on different tattoos. And, you know, she feels more comfortable in some places with these women, you know, having their do the, do the work. And mm -hmm. so I'm like, yeah. And, that, and with more women writing, it makes sense that like, there's more women to provide these other services that, yeah. that women are going to want, you know? And honestly, some of it, I don't want to deal with, you know what I mean? Like some of the, <laughs> the, the, the neediness that some, you know, not just women, but a lot of people have, yeah. like, I usually push that away, but it's like, you know, it, it's just kind of hard to navigate with women sometimes as, as far as like doing work for them, you know? Yeah. And yeah, it's like, I don't want to sound like I'm not like a feminist or anything, but like, how do I say this? <laughs> I've worked with a lot of crazy gals, you know yeah. what I mean? And there's and not all the time, but there's a lot more like, no, that's not even true. I was going to say there's a lot more like, I don't even, I don't know. With anybody, like even if you are a man or a woman and you're getting into this industry, there's always going to be someone that's kind of intimidated by you that yeah. needs to bring you down a level. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, sometimes it's different with men or women, but everybody goes through that too, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I'm not trying to say I've had all these difficult times just because of that. Because like you go into, if I was my age, whatever, going into the shop, all those dudes were way older than me. Yeah. You know what I mean? They probably would have talked to me somewhat like that, but. At one point, that PPG kid guy interrupted me in the middle of my sentence and like pointed across the shop. And we were in here. And he goes, is that your kid over there? And I'm like, okay, she's standing by her father. <laughs> Just because I'm a woman doesn't mean that that's my kid. I'm like, yeah. so there's, there's things wow. like that. You know what I mean? And I was in the middle of my sentence. And I didn't even want to be like, well... <laughs> I'm pregnant right now and I'm doing better than you are and I'm working my ass off, but I'm yeah. not going to bring that up because that's wild. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Just weird shit like that, but it's not always like that. You know what I, I like this. is, I mean, the same reason why I wanted to have you on the podcast, because I want to exploit the, the craftsmanship that you've gotten, whether it's seven years or 17 years, like the paint work that you do, you do is badass. Thank you. And it looks good. <laughs> and so for me, that's no matter you know, male, female, whatever yeah. that needs should always be the determining factor of, of what's good. Not just because it's a woman yeah, or good. just because it's this, you know, but you can ride good for a lady. Exactly. You can paint good for a woman. Cause I mean, realistically that you want that too. You want to be treated as, 
I mean, I assume you want to be treated like you just want to be a painter. You don't necessarily want, I want to be the best woman painter. Well, and at that yeah. point, sometimes you like, you got to work harder because people yeah, expect sure. the worst out of you. So like, even with bikes, like I had a sporty, they're like, oh, that's a good girl bike. So I'm like, I went and got, got a road glide, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, <laughs> with the, the ST, I'm like, I got the biggest motor, you know, and I'm like, okay, you can't say shit now, yeah. you know, especially if like you handle yourself or you paint well, you know, yeah, yeah. but you do feel like. And like, again, it's like anybody, sometimes you just feel like you have to, do you get like a, any like kind of out of line shit coming to you through social media? Cause I know like Ray Ripple, the, the welder chick, mm -hmm. she's told me some like horror stories of how like some people have talked to her through social media, you know, mm -hmm. just men mainly. Yep. And have you dealt with any of that kind of shit? I feel like I've been pretty lucky. Okay. You know, um, yeah, I've had some painters ask me. Like, what are you doing with that? You know, and they don't even know. Like, they saw. I don't know. I've had yeah. some people, like, ask me if I know what I'm doing. But mm -hmm. that was more in the beginning. But honestly, because, you know, with Instagram or whatever, you can get trolled on really easily. Yeah. I feel like I've been really lucky. Same. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I don't really have, like, I've blocked a few people that give me weird vibes here and there. Yeah. But, no, I feel really lucky because yeah. of that. <laughs> We, so you said like you were friends. Uh, is her name Jessica, the the latest mm -hmm. chick? So how is it like being motorcycling up here and like maybe that part of like your world? Uh, well, I mean, I love riding in Utah. Mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, my husband has a motorcycle shop, and then they actually moved right next to them, and they, the Lita's is huge, you know. Yeah. And I've known her for ten plus years. You know, mm -hmm. we kind of started riding together and. So I feel like I have a really good community mm -hmm. um, and we go on a lot of fun rides, but I think Seth and I are more, we're kind of getting a little nerdier, nerdier. Mm -hmm. Like we have our adventure bikes. So we, we have like the nerd jackets and we go off in the dirt for yeah. like two weeks, you know, oh, that's cool. It's, it's like, I think our last trip almost was 3000 miles, but it was pretty much damn near all on dirt. Damn. Yeah. And it's like, so 150 miles a day is like kicking your ass, you know? Um, and that's kind of what we got more into because yeah. it's like you see the craziest shit. You go through like rivers, you know what I mean? You uh -huh. go through mountain passes, moving trees out of your way. You're just dirt biking for Well, you probably days. see a part of the country in a way that, I mean, someone on a, on blacktop's never going to get. Yeah, like cars can't go where we go, not yeah. even four-wheelers some of the time. Damn. So it's like you're going through mountain passes and you're going through, I think we did Idaho to Montana through to like Oregon and California mm -hmm. and going on back roads and all the fire roads through all those places is yeah. insane. But you get, you get yourself in like pretty hairy situations because sometimes there's only one trail mm. and like there's this one and it's just like switchbacks and it's a yeah. hundred degrees, no shade and loose sand. And you're on a bike that's loaded up and Damn. you're just, and I dropped it like a hundred times. I kicked it. <laughs> Seth would, pick it up for me yeah get me going again you know but that's you, that's my favorite kind of writing have y'all considered like doing any kind of uh like you know like out of the country kind of traveling like on these bikes i mean obviously it's mm -hmm. probably tough right now with the kid and everything but yeah you know i think once we can have like a sitter for a few you know like a weekend at a time or mm -hmm. we're gonna figure it out because yeah. we, we love all that stuff but yeah we definitely want to go and that's right. I didn't know you like did all that off road stuff. That's cool as hell. He's gotten me into it. I'm scared as fuck of that stuff. It's so scary. Up. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a. Uh, I, I never like it's, like we said earlier before we started the podcast. I never grew up on dirt bikes, so yep. it's a very unfamiliar place. Um, and I don't know how much a like I enjoy outdoors, but I enjoy it from the comforts of a road. No, yeah, <laughs> so. that's honestly that's how I was. Like, I never really went camping that much, and then I meet Seth, and he's like. He's like, we don't even need a tent. He's like, barely a blanket. I'm like, okay, slow yeah. down. But yeah, he he's like a super good dirt biker. He yeah. he's been in a few races too, oh, and he yeah. always kills it. And I kind of call myself his apprentice because, like, using your GPS and navigating and learning how to fix your bike and flat yeah. tires happen all the time. Like, if I I couldn't go without him, yeah, because so much shit goes south, even like. He had an 11 gallon gas tank at one time and he was the one that almost ran out of gas. Like you never know. We ran into some people that gave us gas Wow. and we're in the middle of nowhere, 
but like he, cause he builds bikes, you know, he's been, he's a super talented guy. Um, he's built me a chopper and my little, that my big gym bike that I sold, mm-hmm. but he completely built me a KTM 525 because I can still pick it up, load it up. Yeah. Cause I can't like, I don't have that much muscle going out and getting an adventure bike. Usually they're almost too tall and mm-hmm. way too heavy already. So he built, he built me like a dirt bike that can go 90, you know, mm-hmm. and also it's a whole thing. That's but. what I think I would probably fuck up on on my end is I'd try to, I'd go buy a big ass GS 1200 and be like, yeah. I gotta have the cool guy shit. <laughs> yeah. And then not strong enough to essentially handle that bike on those down, roads. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Like, and even if you're wore out, like I've been in a situation where it's like, I had to pull my back tire down and try and get it up. And I was exhausted. But I was behind a dude on a GS mm. and his motor came out, like, you know, because they're, yeah, they're they, didn't, wide. they came out wide. So it was on a skinnier trail. I was fine, but his motor hit the side, knocked him off the trail and he broke his thumb. <laughs> and I was like, damn, there's so many things, but it's so much fun. I love it so much. Yeah. I mean, you got so many places to ride out here, especially getting off the roads and stuff. And uh, I mean, like I said, in a different life, maybe I would have been up here. But like I said, in Dallas, like we don't have anywhere to get off. Yeah, really. Um, you got to go out way west Texas, and even that's still a lot of that's private land. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel so lucky with Utah because you do what you can around you. You know yeah. what I mean? And because of that, I'm like, we can go climbing, we can go dirt biking, or like we're going this weekend. We just drive to St. George. That's like four hours, mm. and then you're in 60 degree weather dirt biking for three days. Nice. Getting out of you know, so it's yeah. like you have so many options around here. So back to like the 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 motor. So let me make sure we got a good time. Oh, we got a few minutes. Maybe this will be the last. I thing. mean, if she starts freaking out, then we got okay. to. So we're okay. We got time. Um, when you know, getting back to some of the motorcycle stuff, like what was some of those early days like? Like you know, starting to ride and like what, what was kind of like the the vibe? Like um, I know there's that word again. So <laughs> yeah, I know maybe I use that word too much, but yeah, I use it too much. That's yeah, for damn sure. The vibe. Um, yeah. So I actually how we met them is they started Salt City Builds out of their garage and we were their neighbors. Mm. So they actually, they bought my first bike because the banks were closed, but they taught me how to ride. And then I remember they, this is when they first, first started. They cut off my pipes, like my bike spit fire. I thought it was so sick. (laughs) We rattle canned it black. And I remember I was kind of like on and off in my parents' house because I, I think I was moving or something. And I remember rolling my bike to the end of the street just so I could start it up and ride at like two in the morning. Cause mm. I was like on a summer night, it's like the best time to ride. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I never thought I would like riding. And then I got on a bike and I was just like obsessed. I've always, since yeah. then I've always had a so bike. What do you mean? Like y'all like moved next door to them? Like what? Yeah, we were neighbors. So like, that's how we, Oh, in a house. Yeah. They, oh, we okay. lived on the same street. Okay. Yeah. So Jess had gotten a bike already. And then since we lived down the street and they're starting salt city builds out of there their garage you yeah. know that was right when they first started um then they're like yeah we'll find you a bike we'll make it cool and custom and mm. send you on your way you know that's cool yeah it it was nice because i didn't know what to look for i didn't know what to get i remember i the first time i was like riding it my roommate was in front of her house and mm-hmm. i drove by and i'm like hi and all of a sudden she said she saw a rev just running down the street because i dropped it yeah it was just <laughs> You know, all those good times yeah. of, cause I got a 650, like old Kawasaki six, 650. So I could not pick that thing up. Mm. So, but after that, like, I feel it's like kinda, I kind of got the hang of it pretty quick. And that was, that was probably like 10 years ago. Did you ever do a lot, like a lot of traveling on it? Like going to any events uh, out of, you know, out of state or whatever case may be? Um, yeah, we've, we've definitely done our trips. Um, I haven't gone to a lot of events. Like, I feel like I want to go to Born Free and do all that stuff, but I just... I haven't. I always, uh-huh. I always try and every time I take time off, I always like end up wanting to be on my adventure bike. You yeah. know what I mean? So if I can take time off, it's usually to go yeah, kick yeah. around in the dirt. Um, but yeah, like, so Jess and I have the same birthdays. Um, so usually on our birthday, we'll go take like a big trip to Colorado oh, or, that's cool. yeah. um, and we'll do like a week trip with that kind of stuff. That's fun. I forget Colorado was like right there too. Yeah. So. <laughs> I feel like Utah, we got like, yeah. I mean, Nevada's kind of sucks. I mean, you got to go, I don't know. It's not my favorite place, though. especially when you go West from here. It's just like this long. Yeah. Long, nothing until yeah, Oregon. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. But I mean, 
it's not the worst, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I don't know. But yeah, that's cool, man. Like I think it's it's wild. I didn't know you you've been in the bike game that long, you know, as far as riding and all that mess. Yeah, so. I feel like I could I've been trying to like post my my adventure biking trips a little bit more, but I'm just like when you're yeah, doing it, it just it's I wonder hard. what that space is like if, if there's much of a women presence in that. I don't know. I'm I'm speaking purely out of ignorance of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think there's more dirt bikers. Okay. Women dirt bikers. I think adventure biking is kind of like, it's like an old man sport. Like when we go out there, there's just dudes with big GSs and the huge boxes. Like they do yeah. groomers, like groomer roads. The cool thing about what we do, because Seth is a dirt biker and he made me a bike that is a dirt bike that can go fast. Yeah. So we're, we're kind of finding the trails that are like, like a river, you know, a river yeah. goes through it or we're kind of exploring, mm. but it's like, it's mainly, you don't see a lot of people even our age doing it. Yeah. What I think, you know? Um, so as far, I haven't seen any women do it yet. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. I would definitely think Harley would have leaned into that more, like mm-hmm. getting you on like a, one of the uh, Pan Americas or something like that. Which I love, but those things are so heavy. There's no way. I wonder way if I could they're actually going to make a smaller one, like a, like a, like a smaller platform one. I, they should <laughs> because, yeah, that, that would be a, probably a good move on their part. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, even then, I feel like Harleys have a, a look to them. Mm-hmm. And um, they have to, like, kind of keep that. Like, before you leave, I'll show you my my adventure bike just looks like a big dirt bike. Yeah. It's, like, bare minimum just because I have no muscle. Like, uh-huh. If I if there's, like, barely any way, I can't pick it up. So. Well, it's kind of like the Harley world or, or that space, like, lends itself more to be a kind of like a, a vanity or kind of like a representation of you visually. Mm-hmm. Like you want your bike to represent you in a, in a, the way people see it versus I think the, the whole concept of like the adventure bikes, the dirt bikes is to go do something on it and, and experience it. Yeah. So you're I me, mean, we always want our shit to look cool, but it's like, you're not trying to custom paint it to make it. Oh, it appeal. looks like a piece of shit right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It so. looks like it's used. And I think that's what, like, if I were to pick out a vibe for that kind of stuff, I would just, like, I like the dirt bikey vibe. Yeah. You know, so I feel like that's why we kind of went more toward the, the, I just, I like KTMs, but yeah. I don't, I'm not like a Harley, like the Harley rider, adventure bike rider, you know? I'm mm-hmm. like, just give me a dirt bike. Yeah. And let's. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and he put so much time and money into that thing. So it doesn't look like much, but the way it rides and handles and all that stuff is just, it's like uh, perfect. That's right. So now that you got the shop, I mean, like, what's uh, what's some of the next kind of plans as far as, like, how's this evolution of the Stripe Cult? Pen? Where did that name come from? <laughs> I was going to change it. I didn't even like it that much. Uh-huh. And then I was like, I'll just use this to get it going. Because I just like stripes, like black and white stripes. Yeah. I'm not a pinstriper. It's probably super confusing. Um, I just like black and white stripes like my logo. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, I think it's, I did it's just on like your... a circle and it has some stripes going through it. Mm-hmm. I just have always liked stripes. And so mm. I was like, oh, that works and I'll change it later. And then I just never did. Never did. So it's yeah. not like my my favorite name, but it's stuck, you know. Um, but I do, I really want to get into lowriders. I think that's kind of why, like right when I saw those kind of paint jobs, mm-hmm. I've always looked at those cars. So I'm like, I got this... Um, Eldorado. I got this Eldorado and it's not like what I like. I really want a 66 DeVille. I'm like, that's going to be my mom car. I might drive this around for a little bit, but the interior is like perfect. So I had a four door 66. It was a shit. Yeah. I liked it. I mean, obviously I would have preferred a two door. Yeah. But it was dope because if you rolled all the windows down, there was no pillar between the front and back. back. It was like open all the way across. It was the sickest thing in the world. Yeah. So I'm like, I've yeah. been keeping my eyes open for one of those, but it's only, I think it's only 65 and 66 that make that super straight uh, mm-hmm. body line. Yeah. The 67, you have like the little muscle car mm-hmm. and then the old ones, you got the wing, but. Um, yeah, I'm not really into the wing stuff. I'm not either. Yeah. I just like super straight and long. I want, you know, but anyway, I found that thing and it was pretty affordable, but. Seth can weld, he can do all the mechanical stuff. I can paint, and the only thing we're missing is upholstery. So I think our dream for the shop is to make our own custom cars and sell them. Mm-hmm. You know, and maybe we run into like a couple of cool people here and there that want us to do that to their car. Do the but whole thing, yeah. I want freedom to just do what I want. And Have sell you started it. looking into the uh, upholstery stuff, like, like some of the space of it, if you will? A little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like super gung ho about doing it. And then 
we needed to make sure our bills were paid. So I'm yeah. like, okay, let's keep doing this. But that front office is going to be an upholstery shop. And then you see that old truck out there. Mm-hmm. We're going to, we're going to do the upholstery in that. So that's going to do the whole front clip on that thing. And we're going to lower it and we're yeah. going to put like cool tail lights in it. And we want to make it like a Cholo truck, you know, nice. I'm really excited for that. But if we start with that, yeah. you know, and then maybe here and there do some stuff and pretty soon, Who's that? One of my favorite dudes, Bastards. Not sure if I know them. He's like, he's such a good painter. He's really good at upholstery. Like he puts like chandeliers in his. Oh, shit. Yeah. Like his, his chairs rotate. He does like heart back headrests. Like, like. Oh, that's like OG low rider shit. Yeah. Like, like really crazy, yeah. crazy stuff. And I'm like, yeah. So it's, it would be like almost doing a bike paint job, but with upholstery. Mm. And I'm like, that would be so sick if we could do the whole. That'd be, dead. That'd be red you, you gotta i'll show him to you before you leave but he's like one of my favorite he does those cool paint jobs that are all green or all pink or whatever they are where's he out of i think he's like is he japanese or something probably yeah I he's mean, yeah he looks like, he's like I, a I try not to look at anybody from japan that paint because they're so fucking out of this world I know, of like makes me mad. <laughs> badassness and like innovation yeah and, he's probably like an old regular dude down yeah. there but like to me i'm like that his upholstery, yeah. his paint, it's just like it's insane. So I'm like, I got big dreams, but we gotta Yeah. We gotta slowly get there. Yeah. Take your time and, and try to get try to be a professional at every every little aspect and you know, it'll all come together. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, that's what I feel like's happened in my life. Like yeah, I'm still totally. working on certain parts, but just by doing it all the time and busting your ass, it's like things start to fall into place and next you have thing to you're stay like so focused though. So yeah, it's yeah. hard. Yeah, I I'd like cars, but you need a lot of space. There's a lot. There's just so much more involved to be able to work on. There's bigger paychecks on them, obviously. Yeah. In some aspects, but not you with know. custom though. I almost think like yeah. it might be hard to totally get paid out for that, you know. But sometimes know. it's it's still fun. I mean, especially you're doing it with your your y'all married. Yeah. yeah, we're married. Just being able to do that and share that experience with your husband. I mean, that's something I wish I I could do with my wife. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. And I'm saying that we couldn't, but I, I probably haven't been the best motivator for her yeah. to want to come work with me because I'm so controlling in that world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I have I was teaching Seth how to paint a little bit, and I'd be like, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> you know? and he's like, back the fuck off because yeah, I'm yeah. going to lose my shit. But it was funny. Like, we we never have had problems. We've been together eight years, and he, um, like, we've always just, we get along really well. We all the shit I want to do, he wants to do. We both want to get into the same stuff and yeah. we've always worked together. And then right after we had our kid, we started bumping heads a little bit. And I'm like, we've never done this. Like what is going on? I'm like, it's new kid, whatever. And I realized later that it was because we stopped working. Mm. We work so well together that we just like, when we don't have that, our relationship falls apart. <laughs> you know? So we're like, okay, we got to work till we're dead. Yeah. But it's not even, I guess it's not work. It's, it's our artistic projects together. Yeah. Like that's how we started getting along and that's where that is so oh that makes sense 100 percent. yeah like, so you take that out and we're like you yeah, know we're so fucking, posted in the house like <laughs> yeah. watching tv together so shoulder fuck, checking each other yeah. like, <laughs> but no that's it was right. kind of funny well, i mean you definitely got the shop to do all that i mean there's space in here to to really expand and you know mm-hmm. maybe not so much expand but just like comfortably do all these projects and and mm-hmm. kind of lean into all these different spaces and stuff like that so yeah, and it's, yes. it's big, but I don't know. It's weird. I felt like the space brought more opportunity for money. Yeah. You know, like I, I could work my ass off in my 500 square foot shop and on one bagger and I'd be stepping over it the whole time. Yeah. And now I'm like way faster at painting bikes. Yeah. Organization's big. Yeah. Space, yeah. organization. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you, I don't know how many shops you've been into, but every once in a while, like I'll go into someone's paint shop and it's a fucking mess and you see the mess in their work. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like the cleaner and more organized you can be, the 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 less you're I, – I, I don't know the word I'm u- using. <laughs> just, well, not that. I mean, no, I know, it, my kidding. booth gets like that too when yeah, you're in projects. But, you know, like like me, I have – like you have, I have a space to do everything that I do s- specifically. Yep. Yeah. And I've, I've been to some places where, like, they'll do everything in their booths. And I'm like, eh, this place needs to be for you paint because – if you have everything else set up here and you need to paint something real quick and then it fucks all these other things up, like you got to have spaces and then toolboxes 
in those spaces to hold the tools for that job. It reminds and, me of like you're about to like guide a symphony. You got to sit yeah. down. You got to sit here. You're like you're in that mindset. Play your music. Yep. Start designing. But yeah, if I'm too cramped up in a room for too long, it's yeah, I get it. Yeah. That's how I am. I'm like polishing over there, airbrushing, taping. You know, it's like when I when I do helmets, like I just do them on on my table, which I actually like this table a lot. Actually. I almost got rid of it, and they're like, "Let's put wheels on it." And now yeah, we are it's fucking with it. it's legit. It's like <laughs> yeah. the perfect size. But um, when I do bikes, like I pull my lift into the middle of the shop, mm-hmm. and I set all the parts on it, and I raise it up and down as I'm doing graphics. Oh yeah. So that I can make sure the lines flow together mm-hmm. and all these angles you see the bike kind of have this just like this this comfortable look to it. Like say a bagger, yeah. you know, if you if you think about where you're like most people are gonna see a bagger, like when they walk by, is it gonna be in a line of other bikes? Well, I want them to see that fairing into the tank, into the bag yeah. and have like have like that angle, I need to look badass. Yeah, you know, and oh, then I get it. from the back side, that side of the bag going into the tank, like it has to be You're badass. Just like all the way around. Yeah, the bike. you yeah. want them to have those kind of like, I don't know that that that's just kind of like the nerdy over the top shit I think about when I'm doing uh, graphics on bikes. Well, that's why you're so good at it it's because you. you do think that kind of yeah. way, you know. Um, like, and it's nice that you have a lift because this is my first shop. I haven't been able to do stuff like yeah. that because I couldn't line it up. So I'm yeah. like, everything was panel, panel, panel. You know what I mean? Yeah, separate, like parts. Separate. So now I'm like, ooh, I can do that. And it is it is weird, like, because I did have it. I'm like, okay, it's eye level. I taped it up. We put it down, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, what the fuck? So I had to start again and learn that So, kind like, of when stuff. I would sketch a bike, that would give me, like, a, a, an ideal direction with it. Mm-hmm. And then I'd lay out an initial sketch, like, kind of, like, on the height that you have the lift over there. Mm-hmm. Or like, like lay at the tape. Yeah. And then I'd lower it down and I'd kind of walk around from it. And then I'd kind of raise it up and get a little roller chair and then roll around on it. And, and it's just like. You're like fine tuning it just yeah. a little bit. It's crazy. And sometimes, you know, like. And also I'm, I'm, I am I can see it with the colors like in my head. Like, yeah. all right, this is going to be a lot of red. I need to probably pull this up a little bit mm-hmm. and kill some of that red that's going to be there and kind of balance out your color from uh, there's a lot to go into it yeah people don't see any of that like they see how good it looks but they would never imagine like how much time times you roll that bike up and down and move the little lines and well and it's also like a uh a testament as to why i stopped doing five bikes a month yeah and now i'm doing maybe three a quarter or not even that like probably i probably do nine bikes all year total and i'm proud of every one of them yeah you know what i mean mm-hmm. and um i just i feel like uh you know we were talking about before we we put the mics on it's like i feel right now like a lot of people are like performance baggers kind of a new thing in for a lot of people but it hasn't quite found its flavor of paint it's kind of like got a little yeah. bit of that panel stuff from the dyna culture coming mm-hmm. into it a little bit of this race style coming into it then like everybody's trying to make shit look like the eighties and nineties style stuff yeah. with like the pit vipers and that whole yeah. vibe. And so there's just like this clusterfuck of styles that haven't quite morphed into its own thing yet. It yeah. just seems like a melting pot for, for flavor right now, but it's not really a good dish yet. Yeah. I so. think my favorite stuff for like the racing, whatever is I, I just like, I love the look of the carbon fiber yeah. and like the easy lines that go through it. Like that old race bike style. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like they always look so good like that. Like I painted, this thing is like bagger racing and I, mm. I love that thing so much. I'm yeah. proud of that one, but I painted another one for this guy in, um, um, Arnie. Yeah. Arnie yeah, Wells. Arnie. Yeah. yeah. So I just painted the tank for his race bike. And it was pretty much just like black with these orange things going down mm. and it looks so good on the bike, you know, yeah. like you don't really see it a lot cause it's, it's in some stuff, you yeah. know, but his bike turned out so sweet. He's got some gold 69 stickers on there mm. and he's got, yeah, I, I'm like, cause it, they look, it looks like a performance part. Like the yeah. whole thing looks like that. So yeah, I just think that stuff looks cool. I, I just think that like, that's, that's the other flavor that, that, sometimes people don't think about when it comes to uh, finding a painter is like, yeah, you want the skills, but you also want to find someone with vision. That's the, yeah. that's the most overlooked part of paint jobs. I think, because there's a lot of people that can do the work, but they can't create 
anything. It needs a whole a whole vibe. A whole the vibe. whole the like what the bike is meant for and what it's put on that bike. If those yeah. two things, if it's like a chopper paint job on this, like, I don't know. You know what I'm, yeah, you get yeah. what I'm saying, but I get what you mean. Cause well, it's like, I, I kind of grew up doing low riders too. Like that was kind of my thing from like, uh, Oh seven until 12. Okay. And, uh, I got in low rider art magazine a long yeah. time ago. It was pretty rad. Um, but I used to love that shit. Like, so that's a lot of my flavor is from that low rider culture. Yep. And then. I'm also a huge fan of guys like Poland, Poland Designs. Oh, yeah. Uh, helmet it, guy. He does a lot of, like, like the, the NASCAR helmets and shit. looking. Kind of. But his, his stuff's more... Uh, he's like literally one of the baddest about. helmet painters there ever is, in my opinion. I think he messaged me the other day and said, nice job. And I'm like, thank you so much. <laughs> you have no <laughs> idea what that means. <laughs> and I looked through and, all uh, this stuff. So he's, like, you know, great influence on me. So I, I kind of, like... I think that our styles all become our influences, kind of melted mm -hmm. into one. And mine is coming from that, you know, flake and low rider. I don't really call, call low rider stuff panels or more patterns is kind of the, the yeah. correct term. So I kind of have that from my days in doing low rider shit. And then my love for like race helmets kind of blended together to make the style that I think I'm more known for. You know what I'm saying? Well, I feel like you also, yeah, you have like kind of a racy vibe yeah. to you, you know, and yeah, I love your paint jobs. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, I mean, the, the crazy thing is like, I, I learned how to do all the real fire and oh, yeah. the heavy, you know, affliction looking skulls, crosses, roses. looks like a whole bunch of death I tones mean, album covers. Especially when shit. you started. Like, that's, that's what all it was. Yep. Yeah. And it kind of sucks. And that's what I was trying to tell you. I don't really airbrush anymore because there was a point in time where all I wanted to be was an airbrush artist mm -hmm. because that's where the demand was in this industry. And yeah. now it's like, everybody just wants leaf. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like leaf is so shiny and precious. Yeah. <laughs> like fucking Lord of the Rings. I know. That, <laughs> that like it overpowers like all this skill of airbrush work. And I know. And it takes airbrushing takes a long time. It does. Like it, I can leaf a bike in a day. Yep. You know, and I can't airbrush a bike in a day. But it's weird. It's, I don't know. I have something to kind of compare that to. Like, I feel like tattooing, you sit down, you do it really fast and it's great. And in the beginning, I was I was doing like little, you know, little like a lightning bolt. Yeah. And it's like also like how people view things this is what I'm trying to say, because like I would paint this whole bike, like say that's over there. Mm -hmm. And then I do this lightning bolt and people are like so blown away yeah. that I did this little tattoo. And I'm like, I've been working so hard on yeah. that thing over there. Um, that's happened to me so many times. Yeah. You're just like, what? Like, do you know what goes into this? Yeah. And then people are like, oh, shiny or. Well, it's the same whatever. concept whenever like I can airbrush like a whole mural on this table and have like this intricate, almost like the, the Sistine Chapel kind of thing going on. Mm -hmm. Or I can just buy some lace and throw it on the table and spray through it and peel it up. And people are like, oh, my God, how the <laughs> fuck did you do that? That yeah, is so amazing. And it's just like, you're just like, Wow damn it yeah <laughs> but yeah that's why i guess i'll go fuck myself yeah <laughs> so i'll just put lace on everything and yeah. i'll make some money you know but then you're not proud of it yeah i, I stopped using lace 100 percent. you did yeah i had a i had a couple of patterns that i would use and it got to a point where i was like i don't want this in my paintwork anymore yeah you know? that's that's kind of where like in the beginning i looked at all this stuff that was like super stencily you know what i mean and i think I like some lace, but I think lace is my least favorite. Yeah. Um, on that bike, he really wanted some lace. So I mm -hmm. kind of ghosted it in there, which I like, but there's, I mean, I don't, I don't want to like, I like certain kind of paint jobs more. Like, yeah, I really like the stuff that isn't like tons of stencils and t really colorful. I'm like, I like those straight lines that all flow yeah. together and have really good yeah. color combos. And well, to, to be clear, like I'm not talking about like, I hate, lace paint jobs i just yeah no, for, for me sure. it was kind of like what you're saying as well it's like i just want to get to this point where the things that i kind of use in my paint jobs are more synonymous to me mm -hmm. and especially like i mean you can go through like a whole like barn find kind of hunt trying to find like unique lace from you know different parts yeah. of time and then or you can just go to hobby lobby and buy the traditional shit that everybody has the roses yep. the and I just, I don't know, like, I don't want to, for me, I just got to a point where I don't really want to incorporate that. Like it was a phase. Mm -hmm. And if you got a paint job in this time of my life, then you got some of that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and you're, you're in your different. Yeah. I'm in a different spot now. That's yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Like 
I guess for me, that whole, like you have, I like to fill in those areas, you know, cause you always have a place you need to kind of fill in or maybe you don't, but, um, I like to fill in those areas with something I kind of worked hard on. Yeah. And I think in the beginning, I'm like, I just don't want to just put down lace and just yeah. spray over it. Like, even if it is like on that bike over there, it's just straight lines of tape. Yeah. But that's time consuming though. Yeah. It takes a little bit of time and it's tedious instead of like, like abstract. Yeah. I'm more of a, I want to plan this out instead of like an abstract painter like yeah. this. Cause I do like some laces like on other paint jobs, but like the paint blotchy. You know, that whole thing where yeah. they would hold it close and they would. Oh, kind the of, little circles. Yeah. They yeah, would, kind would of like, blow out the. Yeah, blow out lines and flood lines is yeah. I think that what there are. Which uh, it looks cool, but for me, I'm not like an abstract person. I'm yeah. like, there's a line there or there's not. <laughs> you know, every inch is planned yeah. for me. Like on that bike in particular, like the way you, you kind of use like your, your high real estate panels mm -hmm. with more intricate designs. And then you, I, I don't know, I haven't remembered how the top looks 100% yet, but. Um, I like to take your high real estate, put the detail in that. And then the other areas that are kind of like, you don't see as much mm -hmm. do those more subtly with things that aren't as, as like poppy, Yeah, you know, or yeah. I've gotten to a point too, with like panels where I want to, instead of creating like something that looks like you're going deeper in, I want it to look like the edges are popping it out to you. So yeah. the center has nothing on it, but it looks like it's closer to you than everything behind it. I mean, so it's kind of like, see, it's cool talking to other painters because yeah. I'm like, whoa, because <laughs> usually it's like you want to put the center behind everything. It's yeah. like the deepest point of your paint job. But like, what, that's cool to think about. Yeah. It's like you start layering, like it's still, it's still within a frame, right? Or a panel for some people. And it has, but w instead of like the first thing is like, you know, another deeper, it's deeper, but then it, in the center it comes forward instead of in the center, it keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper. I mean, that's, so, yeah. there's so many ways you could do it. I feel like I'm like, now my mind is now I'm excited <laughs> for the next bike. Cause you're probably going to see that <laughs> something yeah. like that on the next one, but it's cool. Cause everybody does it in their own way. You know, you know, I've said it a lot in the podcast early on was one of the, the panel thing really came into the motorcycle industry really heavy in like 2010 through 2012. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then it just, I thought it was a fad that was going to go away. Yeah. And then it kind of just got stronger and stronger and stronger. And then finally in 16, I did one. Yeah. But panels in its most basic form is the easiest paint job and anybody can do it, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But it wasn't until I started doing it that I found ways to make it complicated and make yeah. it harder, make it a little bit more skillful. And, yeah. and same thing today. It's like you want to take these basic shapes and you want to turn them into something that, that, a, another person, that's always the thing that I love about uh, watching other people's work. Yeah. Man, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. You know? see that just now, I was like, damn it, that's a really good I, idea. That's, that's been my whole life. I mean, it happens all the time. Someone, these fucking people from Japan that are just insane. You got to see his work. He's like one of my favorite <laughs> painters, you know? And then I saw his upholstery, and he does videos of all of his upholstery, oh, and I'm like, okay, so my car needs a chandelier in it now. Yeah. Damn it, now I have to climb up that, you know? <laughs> So I got over here doing mosaic panels and making chandeliers and shit. Yeah, chopper interior. <laughs> Go. I'm like, damn it. I don't know what I'm doing. That's rad. I'm excited for it though. I think that's I hope I can do it. No, I think it'll be I think that'll be cool as hell, man. So uh but no, that's cool. I I, I you know, I guess we can start wrapping it up because you know, we we've we're almost at two hours. Oh, tight. But I still need to shoot some video of you guys and stuff yeah. like that and, and then get on the road. I think I got two more podcasts today. To, oh, yeah. yeah. Not video, though. Just yeah. two more audio. So it's super simple. But Just set up the microphones yeah. and talk for a little bit. Yeah, just talk. Get get a story. And then that'll just come out in like an audio form. And this mm -hmm. one will come out as YouTube and then audio That's separately. Exciting. So I'm excited for no, it. This first was, podcast? Huh? First podcast? Yeah. I mean, I kind of forgot I figured people would have do, would like, would have reached out to you before, you know? Um. Like I said, I'm pretty quiet. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I post on my Instagram and then I kind of, I'm bad at that too, you yeah. know? Um, so maybe I'm not as good at marketing myself or getting <laughs> out there as I should be, but I don't know. I've always been a really quiet person. Like, yeah, I'm not super social, you know, that's probably why I haven't gone to like events or whatever. I've always just kind of stayed in my bubble and yeah, yeah. done my artwork. So maybe more will come from this, but I kind of forgot that I was even on a podcast <laughs> that there's all these cameras everywhere, <laughs> which is sweet. That's a good point. You do a good job. 
thank you. Uh, I think that's kind of another thing. It's like me too, or no, not me too, but um, <laughs> I, I've struggled with social media recently to where yeah. I, I make posts and then I, I shut it down. I have no notifications on. Yeah. So I miss a lot of things on there. A lot of people reaching out about certain things. Like I just, I don't catch it. You know what I'm saying? But you, you probably just don't need it anymore. Uh, maybe I, I needed this. Like I reached on. out to you through Instagram and we set this thing up. Right. And yep. so I, I still need to use it for this kind of stuff, but maybe I'm being a little bit more selfish on there. Like I'm using it for what I need and I'm not there for everybody else's needs. Well, you know what I'm saying? That's the point of it. Yeah. Is to benefit you. Yeah. So if it's not benefiting you, like it's really not maybe right now, yeah. you don't really need it, but you have all your work on there. You know, I yeah. feel like that's, what it's good for yeah like i said i just want to you know you, it sucks whenever you're like i don't know like you feel like you should be following certain people but i don't like to this sounds like an asshole thing but when i go on social media like i want to be inspired and i want to be i want to learn i want to be inspired i want to see shit that's cool that makes me want to do stuff and so it's like i look at i used to follow social media it's like i know that person i want to keep in contact with yeah. them but it's not like that anymore it's like, no, I want to see what people are doing that's cool. And so if I have, if I follow a lot of people just because I know them, like that's what my personal Instagram is for. Mm -hmm. But my business, I want to be on there, you know, when I'm scrolling on something, I want to see cool shit. I want to, you know, see it, cool bikes being built or people doing cool travels and trips and things like that. Like, I don't want to see another selfie. You know what I'm saying? On, yeah, I've gotten, some of my friends have gotten mad at me because I don't, follow them and yeah. i have a rule where i keep my followers like who i follow uh, below 200 people yeah because then it just like because then at 200 it's really easy to go through it and weed out what you don't need anymore mm. and then because like pretty soon you have like three thousand people i got three thousand fall i'm following three thousand yeah. people and it's kind of a shit show i don't even yeah I guess, you don't even see it on your feed anymore because mm -hmm. it's what I mean? just too much like i follow like tattooing painting and like funny cat videos <laughs> is all i need you know um but yeah, I'm like, if you, that's what I've always done. I'm like, yeah. just keep my shit below 200 and it's strictly exactly what I want to see. Mm -hmm. And if someone wants to get mad at me for not following, I'm like, you don't have to follow me. It's all paint, you know? Yeah. I don't want to see your food. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's a good that's point. I'm glad you said it because I didn't have to say Sounds like a dick thing to say, but it's, it's true, you know, but. Well, yeah. I think that we're all getting to a point just socially as humans dealing with we've had social media for so long is that we're starting to kind of like find a baseline of what life is going to be like with social media, even though we've had it for 15 years, yep. almost 20 years now, it's still, it's like it keeps changing and it's hard for us to change with it as quickly. So now it's kind of like more of an anxiety thing in my place. Well, you have you to like I mean? keep up and that's the problem. It's like posts. No, it's now, now it's reels. Now it's like, you got to get TikTok. Yeah. And now you got to start dancing on your thing. <laughs> At that there's, point, you're like, I don't dance. <laughs> like, there's this only video. so much I can do here. There's this funny ass video, and I, I'm, I'm gonna try to like explain it as good as I can. But it's this guy that's like, he'll walk into a McDonald's with a McDonald's cup, and it'll be like quiet, but these people will be doing like a, a number, right? And it just sounds like they're on a basketball court, like squeaking because they're dancing around. And he's just, <laughs> it goes back and forth to him, just looking at it, going like this. I think I know, and he's like. And then he goes somewhere else and it's a construction site and they're doing shit. And, and they're I dancing. just, I'm just like, this is fucking brilliant. He you has know what a I'm beard. Saying? Yeah, I think right? so. Yeah. Yeah. And he just, it's like, splashes water on him. He's like, hey, calm down. <laughs> yeah, I know. I actually, yeah, I know what you're talking. But like, yeah, Instagram or whatever, it should be for funniness or for like learning stuff or, I mean, there's a couple of close people, you know, but yeah. I mean, it, it's a tool. Yeah. To well, if, if you're someone like, I would consider us like in a space of, you know, doing things like this, but you know, this, this is going to sound fucked up and I hope it doesn't, but I think it will. <laughs> if I just had a normal corporate America job, social media would be a different thing for me. Yeah, I wouldn't, you know, yes, I'd probably follow certain things I'm interested in, but I don't know. I don't know. It, I, I'm not in that space, but I just wonder if maybe that would be a different angle that you would look at what you want from social media. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, and at that point, like for me, I think if I didn't paint or didn't like use it to, you know, share Promote, my work, yeah. I think I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd have one. Cause other than that, like, I'm not like super into wearing like cute clothes or yeah, like being seen, uh -huh. but 
I mean, I was always into art, so I'd probably have my paintings on there, but no one really followed me when I did that. Yeah. So I'm like, I feel Bastards. like personally, I got nothing going on. Yeah. But my work, you know, I'm like, I have something to show for that. Yeah. yeah you that know? makes sense. No, that's, that's kind of what I would, I would probably do too, you know, is, uh, here's I me don't in know. a sweater and a beanie. And then you're like, okay. Red or red or black today, guys. I need your help. <laughs> and people would probably love it, honestly. <laughs> well, cool. I really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, yeah, can you know, best of luck. I don't know if luck's a word at, with this endeavor here yeah, at the shop thank and you. everything you're building with it. And and um, you know, keep killing it. Thank you. Yeah, this was super fun. Do you have like a website or any of that type of shit, or is it just? Go to Instagram, DM me. Yeah, pretty me much go to thing. Instagram. I made a, I made a website, and now people try and get a hold of me on that, and I like can't even keep up. So I probably should <laughs> take that down for a yeah. minute because there's a lot going on. But yeah, yeah I usually just use my Instagram. Mm. It's, it's easier. Yeah, because it's just all my work stuff is just in that. It's easier messages. also reference like, hey, check this out. You like it? Yeah, Share send me stuff that you messages. like. There's pictures. There's my stuff. It's just yeah, it's easier. Yeah. Well, cool. Salt Lake City. Follow her on Instagram. Uh, yeah, thank Get you. Me up. Just kidding. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank you.